Throw Gang, we are joined by the textile titan. He must be a jiggle how he's slinging these mushroom tips. <laughs> the MFG MVP. He crochet the bro way. Your cock stink, he block print. Oh, you don't manufacture in India? How about you manufacture in these nuts? Prince of the patchwork. Burnt a thousand copies because the pullovers don't pull up. Shitting on you hoes because the fiber's all natural. The organic overlord. The Zen Zeppelin. Kenny, kick it because the hand died. He's sustainable. You stuss and ain't able. Call him sexy brown because the last name Al Rube Ski Yi. Co-founder and designer of Story MFG. Saeed Al Rubeyi, Saeed Al, how are you? I'm good, thank you. What's I've up, really bud? been looking forward to hearing what the intro is going to be. <laughs> Did not I was so I was so pressed that I wasn't that I was like it wasn't going to work with the ski yi thing. Do you find it harder to write these now that that people that you you get guests when you have guests on that have like similar similar jobs or similar vibes or like I just Antonio on with block print and you know crochet is a thing. <laughs> well, with 18 East, I couldn't reuse the joke about Asian schoolgirls, so. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, but um, the one yeah. I liked particularly was him covering his own shit. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. As, as you seem to be yourself, always. Well, that's what we're gonna figure out. It's mm -hmm. great to see you, Saeed. Thank you for coming through. Um, how jet lagged are you right now on a scale of one to sixty nine? Uh, I'm. I think I'm probably pretty jet lagged, but because we've got a kid, it doesn't feel as bad as it used to. Like, oh, you're just perma jet lagged. It feels pretty normal. <laughs> yeah, we get it. You good. had sex. That's cool. Yeah. Oh, by yeah. the way, congrats on the sex, bro. Yeah. <laughs> One time sex ever. Um, I Two feel times. like the last time we saw you or met you was at the bazaar mm -hmm. a year ago. Yep. And now you're in town. You're leaving before the big budget sequel. But it seems like you always pop up when Johns are being fucking moved, dude. Yeah, I like to I like to make sure I keep my own. Because you're a cutthroat capitalist. <laughs> <laughs> you like to sell shit? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so speaking of being covered in your own shit and or drip, let's do a little fit check, Saeed. The choice for you. And we don't need to really get into the spiel. You listen to the show. Top down, bottom up, go off. Top uh, bottom up. Oh, there it is. There it is. Well, I thought about it way Whoa. too much. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> no, we call ourselves a bobby. <laughs> I, know, I know the right answer, but I don't know why it's the right answer. Uh, it just is. We, okay. just <laughs> <deter> <laughs> we, d we just determined. We just determined it randomly. It's a four-year-long bit that we cannot escape. Yeah, okay. we're right, locked cool. in now. All right. So on my feet, I've got um, some old plimsolls that were equi that I uh, overdyed in blue with in with indigo. Did mm. you overdye them yourself? Yeah, I nice. did. Yeah, I like the way that I like the way that things look when they're overdyed. So he's crafty. Yeah. <laughs> Plus, uh, boring but natural indigo is high. Um, it's antifungal and antibacterial, so oh. just keeps feet fresh. Really? Yeah. I did not know that. Good yeah, yeah. Tip. Good tip. What for about the, all the stinking the jeans out there, dude? <laughs> well, that's not natural indigo. Oh. That's synthetic indigo. Natural indigo is a little bit different. There it is. And Could they also like if you think about the people that wear in those jeans that for ages and ages and they don't actually smell as bad as they. By rights, should it's probably the indigo. Well, it's like he it's goes like nose blind. <laughs> it's like a those old jeans smells like a dog's paw. You know, it's like wet Fritos. Mm -hmm. It's kind of comforting in a way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's in nostalgic. A way. Yeah. Ah, yeah. Uh, in a way, uh, ball yeah. sweat. Uh, yes, ass. Mm. Just bringing back so many memories. <laughs> but you are wearing socks because I would say, like, if it's natural indigo and it uh -huh. has all these antifungal properties, you could go no socks. I could, but that's the. That's the worst. That's my least favorite thing ever. It's no socks. No socks. Hate, hate Number it. one most hated. Yeah, probably closely followed Not by child soldiers the... or hate crimes yeah. or war, oh, I mean, poverty. Me there, yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm talking about... <laughs> nice, Lawrence. You got him. <laughs> uh, what yeah. are the socks? Uh, standard Uniqlo. Mm. They're the best. Okay. Well, at least the best that I've found. Um, and then shorts. These are ours. They're just our bridge shorts dyed with, um, dyed with acacia brown. Uh, they're kind of like a, we've got like a, not sub brand, but like another little sistery brand part called Story FG RTS. Okay. And they're just like plain natural dyed stuff. This is, this is one of them. What does the RTS stand for? I'll tell you what it doesn't stand for. It doesn't stand for roots, <laughs> which is <laughs> what we originally were going to call it, but then we got a. Ready to Oh, out. from oh, yeah. the Canadian roots. I mean, I couldn't possibly say. Okay. But, um, <laughs> Use your imagination. Kids. Yeah. So it's, it's RTS, which stands for, I, I can't remember exactly what it stands Ready for. Ready to shit. Like, you can't remember <laughs> your own, you can't. Can't remember your own shit? Yeah, I can't. No, I can't. It was like... It stands for remember this shit. Yeah, <laughs> it was like researching something, something, something. I don't remember. <laughs> we, we went through a lot of different iterations. And I kind of also like that ambiguousness. Like, there's a lot of Japanese brands that just, like, like letter soup that I don't think anyone right. really well, knows what it is. Right, well, that's typically a translation issue. Yeah, sometimes. Yeah. But sometimes I ask, like... I guess you are speaking the things. kings, after all, so... <laughs> I am. I am. Okay, so RTS, who's to say? Yeah. Right. Whatever you want it to be, choose your own adventure. Yeah, I mean, just like MFG, it doesn't really... There's a lot of different... It's on manufacturing? I mean, strictly, yeah. Motherfucking <laughs> Johns with a G. Yeah, I mean, we got we get a lot of people, a lot of different things that MFG could possibly be. Motherfucking yes, garments. Is what is it? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Okay. I don't know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> it, it is a contraction of the word manufacturing, but 
you know, not everyone always knows that. Lots of people, lots of customers come up with their own weight reasons for it. What's Sometimes the dumbest one you've ever heard? <laughs> <laughs> I'd have to look back. We recently did like an Instagram post <laughs> that was like, "What is what is the what does MFG stand for?" And there was a lot of like motherfucking gums. Yeah, nice. my friend's girlfriend. Oh, yeah. I don't know. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> there was a lot of there was a lot of them. A lot of puns from the fucking yeah. streets, yeah. dude. Yeah. yeah. Mommy's favorite Don't quit boy. your fucking day job. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, Moving on up. Up. Uh, underwear oh. is for Marks and Spencers, which I heard Susan Alexandra. Fancy. Yeah. Well, I, see sh- I, I, I actually have a question to ask you. She said it's the British Target. Is Target fancy? Oh. No. Maybe I'm Target thinking Target is a bit fancier. Yeah, yeah, no, Target wrong. is. Marks and Spencers is fancy. Okay. It's like the fancier. Oh, so the, the Target street. was a, that was a not the correct well, I, analogy. Yeah, I was confused. Well, Susan just has exquisitely expensive <laughs> yeah, taste. Yeah, I, I was going to say, maybe she's she rich as hell, dude. Okay. This brand, the Target of Britain. Yeah. Yeah, yeah no, it's not. It, but it's 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 a high street brand, but it's a bit it's a bit fancy. I don't know what it'd be like the Whole Foods like end of things. Okay, <laughs> he bought his underwear at the fucking <laughs> hot bar at Whole Foods. <laughs> yeah. But this is your underwear brand of choice. Yeah, I uh, th- mostly mostly buy from Marks and Spencer's. Comfortable, like she said. What just like cut? great? Com- com- uh, might upset you guys, but I'm kind of I'd do all of them. Oh, you have a, like you switch it up. I'm like those people that like don't have a side of the bed they sleep on. Except I what? do with a bed, but with the underwear. What, be- what side of the bed do you sleep on? Uh, right hand side, stage right. <laughs> yes, yeah. yes. <laughs> sleepers right. Yeah, the right. I was talking to my wife about this recently. I was like, I don't think we have sides. She's like, we have sides. We've always. <laughs> so you're focused on other stuff, dude. Yeah, like right. trying so to figure out what your brand stands for. Uh, briefs, <laughs> briefs. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Love right. that. Perfect on a day like today. Yeah. In so. my opinion, I know I you think would so. disagree, but boxes just kind of bunch up. Nah. Let them, yeah. th- these let, them fa- let, them, let them fang swang. Shorts. <laughs> yeah, these shorts. Nothing's bunching up in these burlap mm-hmm. sacks, brother. Mm-mm-mm-mm. Okay. Uh, the shirt. The shirt. Is that story as well? Yeah, this is story. This is um, from the most recent collection. Yeah, it's hand-woven, hand-dyed. Soft hand as hell. Soft as hell, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's soft as hell. That hand feel was felt like a baby yeah, dick when, when I was giving you a hug. Oh, right. When we okay. hugged you. <laughs> yeah. All right, when we embraced enough. earlier, because yeah. we were so happy to see you, I lingered <laughs> just to get a, just to nuzzle yeah. up on that fucking I don't know what's softer, fiber. The, the shirt or your eyelashes. <laughs> mm, <laughs> you do yes. have beautiful do you eyelashes. Have, do you have the longest eyelashes in all of the United Kingdom? It might, might be. Yeah. It might be. Yeah. Great you brows, great so? beard, great yeah. eyelashes. Yeah, Good jeans, dog. Yeah, I mean, I got all the hair everywhere but my <laughs> but my head. Yeah. Where it <laughs> counts. <laughs> <laughs> and what's what is what's the hat that you whipped out to cover the the chrome dome? Uh, just uh, this is also one of ours. That's a sample uh, that we're making. The what's moment. the F stand for? <laughs> <laughs> well, we're supposed to be selling these where you could choose a letter, like oh. like 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 here. But I only have M F G back at home, so it was about. Oh. It was like, <laughs> so I was trying to work out M F or G, and I just <laughs> thought F F was. I was I wanted to make like a T F one. Ooh. For you guys to bring, oh. I will bring you guys one, Bruh. one each. That'd have been beautiful. But Wait, well, I get now. the T, he gets the F, and we just stand next to each no, other. I'll make, I'll make a, I'll make two. <laughs> I'm with F. Yeah. <laughs> we can't swap sides. Or yeah. the Financial Times, what? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I do like the F though, because you're in New York, motherfucking yeah. city, baby. You yeah. fucking fuck. Yeah. There it is. You've right. seen that shirt before? No. Oh, it's no, a, I you were just it's a classic that. souvenir that's item. Just that's just how Lawrence talks. Actually. Um, let's talk about the fucking timepiece, my friend. Oh yeah. This is uh, a Submariner. I think it's from '96. It was uh, when when we one of the goals for when we started Story was I would buy eventually buy myself a nice watch. Hell yeah! Uh, and not knowing anything about watches, I thought they were like a thousand pounds or something. <laughs> nope. <laughs> so I finally got the money together and I went like, shopping. Damn, we got to launch like, Gentle Fullness. Yeah. And you're like, damn, I'm, I'm only in the Timex tax bracket. <laughs> yeah. But then, like like everything, when stuff gets is more expensive, you just suddenly want it a little bit more. So I've just been hunting around for ages and ages and ages and ages. And uh, finally, we had a, had a trip to Japan last, like a few months ago. And the economy there is much worse than the UK. <laughs> uh, and I managed to buy one. Nice. So that was it. Yeah. Box and papers and the whole no, deal. Nothing. Oh, oh there. Yeah. So what's there the next, go. what's the next goal for the br- for the brand? What's the next benchmark? Mm. And by the brand, I mean you buying shit for yourself. <laughs> uh, I don't know. You know, I actually, I, I, I like like all obsessives. Like I, I end up buying this, and I bought another one, and I bought another one, and I, and I just like bought and sold a bunch, just like loads of people did during during the pandemic. And I kind of just kind of didn't care about. I don't actually like watches anymore. Mm. Are we entering just, really just like general one? watch fatigue? It I feels like so. a lot of people are just like, yeah, I was like, it was a nice hobby, and then I'm just like, eh. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. There's just so much. There's just some. 
I mean, uh, I can see why people would be bored of it because you kind of get really tribal about it really quickly, and then like all of the good stuff hasn't changed ever, and no <laughs> one really wants it to change. <laughs> so there's not really much development going on. Right, the innovation is not there necessarily. Yeah, and um, especially with a brand like Rolex, where they're like, they're we're just playing the fucking the, the hits. Yeah, exactly. For these rich assholes. And f- the bar to entry is so so high. Yeah. Um, to get anything interesting, you have to have like thousands, t- like so much disposable income. You got to launch um, a successful brand. That's, that's true. Years yeah. old. You need yeah. a couple <laughs> of the fusion lines in there as well. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. I like that. That's a blue yeah. dial, navy. It's like a navy blue, or is uh, that? It's black. Oh, it is the, okay. But the bezel is kind of bluish. Which Sorry, is that's what I mean. The bezel. Yeah, which is why I bought it. Oh, kind of fuck! <laughs> God right. damn it! <laughs> yeah, they kind of they they go blue over time, which is the thing that I also like. That's the reason I bought it. That's kind of the only reason I was able to like justify like getting it there and then. Um, but yeah, it's my favorite. It's I really gorgeous, do love man. it. Yeah, I love it. I love any. I love these like. I Is love it when something's really classic, but it's got it's aged or mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. fucked up or changed a little bit. The patina. Yeah. Is patina. it still on British time? No, it's on American time. Nice. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> that's respectful. Respect. <laughs> All right. Uh, Is that um, it? I think that's everything. No yeah, jewelry. Nothing else. No, I usually wear. Um, I usually wear one of we make these little uh, hand carved necklaces that we give out with orders from from the from the website. But I but I had to break mine before I came here and use a string for something else. What do you have to use it for? Uh, we were doing some like development with our zips, and we were putting some beads on some zips, and it was the only string we had, so I just <laughs> used it. <laughs> <Yes>. Okay, <laughs> just a bit of like MacGyvering. I like that. Okay, Fire. I think, and you're drinking a glass of Green Point's finest, That's staying right. hydrated, trying to beat that jet lag. Mm-hmm. All right, say, so let's get into the meat and potatoes of this podcast. Let's get into the full fry up of this pod. Uh, <laughs> the brand Story MFG that you are the co-founder and designer of is turning ten years old this year. Mm-hmm. What are you planning for the occasion? Um. Yeah, it's a good question. <laughs> um, gonna break some more shit. <laughs> yeah. I well, we we put together a book about Ooh. the first ten years, which uh, I, we, I think it's ambitious that we'll have it out for the actual anniversary. The eleven year anniversary is, is <laughs> obviously yeah. more important than I ten. I want to do something. Like I see brands all the time. G- be like it's our ten year anniversary, and then like it's a big deal. Some sp- some project product. Yeah, like yes. nothing big. Um, so I want yeah we want to do a book and we've d- we changed so much and done so much over the last ten years so that that's that's what we're doing having a doing a book but we're also within the company and like we've changed also changing so much and I feel feel like next year is going to be like our big our big year mm-hmm. so yeah we're just working on like Wha- loads in what ways it going to be your year um we just got <laughs> next really year's g- my year yeah <laughs> for <laughs> real stay like tuned next <laughs> yeah oh, it's always like you. I was, I was about to reference like an old British TV show, but That's the, fine. Jo- the joke in it is that next year we'll be in millionaires. It. Uh, it's uh, only fools and horses. Okay, we're always talking about like next year. Yeah, next year they w- we won't have any cash flow issues. <laughs> next year, like all of our, all of our production will be tight. Um, <laughs> I don't next know. I just feel like we've got real. we've got like a really good team now. Bill, Bill, finally, yeah, yeah. yeah. We got yeah. Billy in the cut. Yeah, yeah what up, Billy? Billy. Yeah, our general manager sitting here. We've got uh, production managers. We've got designers. We've got like we've got all of the people that we should. How have big is the team now? 15. Wow. 15. Yeah. Okay. And then, but, but, but um, like I've said before, like three years ago, it was just me and Casey. Right. It's nuts. So it's quite like. The family business has grown. Yeah, it's grown. It's still very, very, very family like. But as me and Casey have like needed to step away for different reasons, or we've needed like expertise here and like there. Like raising your child. Yeah, raising a <laughs> kid. Who's COVID. the most redundant member of the team? <laughs> <laughs> like if you had to get rid of one, I mean, yeah. Who are we fired? 15 a lot. <laughs> um,. I'm gonna have to say myself. Just <laughs> come on, dude. Just not to offend anybody. Yeah. Um, yeah. Probably myself. Like so, like ten years in, I mean, it, even even as you've built out the fucking A team, the Avengers, um, <laughs> what kind of still like presents issues? Like, what have you not really figured out just yet? What is always just like a pain point? Um, the thing is probably like this kind of thing. Like, we don't do that much press. We just got a press agency, but we never did, did any press and. That was one I of the I think you're a press darling, though. Not really. I mean, anything we've story. got. Yeah, 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 maybe. But anything that we've got, we've got against our will. Or, <laughs> or, or like, completely organically. And Billy Billy put it best. He was, ta- he was talking to us the other day. He's like, story doesn't really control its own narrative. So yeah. Story doesn't control its own narrative. Ironic story. Enough, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's in and the so damn name. <laughs> and so, like, we get, um, you know, put together other brands or merchandise in certain ways or talk, talked about as if, if we're streetwear or a bunch of stuff that mm. we people might not, we people might not. think you're streetwear. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. How do you? What's your like gut reaction when someone's like streetwear brand story MFG? Personally, I don't give a shit. <laughs> actually, I don't really mind. Like, I, I have this like Bathian thing where I feel like, you know, I don't care what people call us, but it does actually really matter to the business. It doesn't matter like where you're seen, how you're seen, like what you're called, because it kind of 
guys like if you're seen as a streetwear brand you might be put in a streetwear section and then we're like super expensive for streetwear yeah. whereas if we're like a luxury brand we're actually kind of cheaper a luxury <laughs> brand so it does matter for the brand do you think that you can be categorized or is, is story almost like, is the beauty story in that it's kind of like does fit in all these different categories depending on like the context and the consumer himself i was herself. skeptical about that like i thought that probably you can't and maybe it's a bit of maybe it's a little bit um silly to try but 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 apparently good pr you you can and you right. can kind of like tell your own story control and your own narrative yeah exactly and uh well, that's why you're here baby yeah well yeah kind of straight from the horse's <laughs> mouth <laughs> even though this wasn't arranged by any press this is just, uh, <laughs> just <laughs> yeah, hey, hey what's up guys can i come on the show <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> yeah so that's that's the, that's a, a struggle and then there's like the constant struggle that will never go away which is the kind of work we do where we use natural dyes natural materials we spend a lot of time researching developing new stuff but it's all like old new stuff it's like finding old transcripts of ways things were done in the past and trying to like reverse engineer like how the egyptians did something <laughs> or like that kind of thing and uh, uh, it was so aliens it was aliens yeah. by yeah. the way it was ancient yes. aliens so and uh, you know. and uh jewish slaves <laughs> <laughs> well. also the jewish yeah. slaves yeah. Yeah. yeah or sometimes things that are even equally not equally as horrific as jewish slaves <laughs> but like equally horrific like sometimes you're like how do they get this blue to last so long and it turns out it's like little boys piss oh my god <laughs> <laughs> Or um, breaking you take, news. Or you like take the foreskin and you drop it in the mortar pestle, yeah. and you just you know. People, <laughs> people back back in the day were brutal. Was it really pissed that made stuff really? Yeah. Is that why your Rolex yeah. is blue? <laughs> yeah, no. Yes, damn, no. he really is covered <laughs> in his own drip. What the fuck? Uh, there was a way of naturally dying uh, in the UK and, and and Ireland. I'm sure in other places where you would um, there was ni nitrous from 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 urine, so they would be like young boys wee, and, and also actually the, the best quality to use was like a drunk man's wee the morning after. <laughs> no way. Well, yeah. If, yeah, if you wanted to be like brown, right? No, no, if that was to get like the purest blue back <laughs> in the day. It, this is what? this is obviously mixed. With, it's not dying with piss. It's <laughs> right. piss to facilitate the dying of natural indigo. Right. There's other ingredients. Yeah. So was the there like a town elixir. drunk that, like, the town with the fu most fire Johns had like the drunkest town drunk. Well, but he may, maybe didn't wear them, but he was the most highly prized person. Wow, yeah. that and man was like, an artisan. They just plied him with like stout and like Don't cider. Know. Yeah, I guess. I guess it's like wagyu. wagyu. Wow, dude. Yeah. Um, this, guy's yeah. Just, this guy's bent in on a bar stool. He can't move. He's just Damn, drinking. Dude. Uh, yeah, so so that I mean that's a struggle. Always like trying to trying get to get pissed from the village idiot. Yeah, we don't, <laughs> don't do that because it's not strictly vegan. But yeah. what's that? yeah, that's true. What's like the weirdest quote unquote weirdest or like most out there technique that you have done with one of your actual garments? You know, short of pissing in your own dive vat. Um, they're all pretty wild. They all like take you know at least ten days to to like just fix the color or do that kind of thing. But there are some wild ones which you haven't ended up releasing, like where you. Where you use oil and then you've got to bake it in the sun and mm. then you've got to delicious. Yeah, and it takes like mm. twenty to thirty days to great to British start. John's off. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know if we like. It feels like the bar for weird is so different for us. I would say all of our stuff was weird, but nothing that is weirder than weird. No Have you ever done something where like, I don't know what the British equivalent of like the FDA is, but they're like, uh, no, you can't sell, you know, whatever this John that was died using X Y Z because it just is like, I don't know. Unethical. <laughs> uh, there's not. There's nothing Illegal? like that. There's nothing like that really. There, there, there should be because, um, <laughs> because I mean, I remember while I was working at another company, which I, I won't name, some, uh, some, someone came along and tested all of the clothes they made for kids, and they were like full of carcinogens. Oh my god! Cause Yikes! Cause dying. You know the way fabrics treated, like it, it's pretty, pretty horrid. But there isn't actually anything like that in the world for. That kind there of was thing. some, or maybe it was not a rumor; it was a real thing. But like Viz Vim, who also does like weird dying stuff, they were like killing beetles and then using like the beetle carcasses to dye stuff yeah. and that was like a weird flex probably la yeah <laughs> lack. that's one of the ones we don't use yeah yeah no yeah. animals harmed in anything oh we try i mean we try not to there's yeah. no animal products i mean right. I've, i mean like there's always the like anti-vegan argument like oh you would step on ants step on ants when you're <laughs> cutting down trees or whatever. lantern flies yeah but, but no there's no animal products yeah no leather all. Uh, and no, no leather, no suede. No leather, no suede, no wool, no silk, no lac. There's a few other mm. natural dyes that are, that are bug-based. We don't use any of them. Right. <laughs> Damn, crazy. <laughs> bug us. <laughs> bug it off. How based of you to not use anything bug-based? Yeah. <laughs> What's been the biggest mistake you've made in the last 10 years? Ooh. The biggest wh fuck. Where to begin? Yeah, yeah. where to begin? <laughs> um, I'm not sure. I feel like every mistake is a learning thing. Mm. Uh, we've made some ooh, we've made some mistakes with manufacturing, like going too soon somewhere, like like believing people that they they're able to do that. Oh. Let's do <laughs> honestly, <laughs> people trusting yeah. people, yeah. working <laughs> with other people <laughs> is just a mistake to begin with. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Like, there's a couple of times where we've like ha moved down manufacturing and given them a significant order, and then they've not been able to do it, and then we lose out. And yeah, we've we've had some we've had some, a lot of sleepless nights. 
Uh, we're a bit more careful careful now. But um, I can't think of like any one massive, massive mistake. But to story, I know that you do work, you are in a lot of like stores and mm -hmm. that, you know, you have to meet certain delivery windows. But like, do you kind of operate on your own schedule? No. Or do you do you <laughs> operate within like the, okay. You the can't, that you, you can't. Need to. Like there's a lot of, there's a lot of people that come into this thing, including us. And we're like, hey, we're seasonless. Mm -hmm. yeah. We're like anti, we're like, like we're streetwear like, but yeah, we're luxury yeah, we have this like <laughs> punk mentality about everything like we're not gonna fit in you you pretty soon realize that you gotta, <laughs> you gotta like fit in something you, <laughs> you better can, like, figure it out yeah. you can or you're be, getting like, kicked out there yeah. are things that we don't fit in like the way we do stuff the way we dye stuff the way our stuff wears the uh, you know that kind of stuff just um, not a brick in the wall but in terms of delivery windows like that stuff is boring but it's that's 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 mandated by like se when the sale starts right and all of that stuff and you can not be part of those delivery windows and you can't um but you end up not getting a decent order because you just don't fit and it's hard work for the buyers it's hard work for everybody involved so so no we instead of instead of not instead of eschewing that we then sort of set up our own manufacturing so that we don't have to compete with other brands who are trying to make at the same time so that we can because it's a bit different for us we a brand could, you know, get an order f and then they uh, f they would take it to the factory and the factory might take two weeks, but they've got to find two weeks to fit them in. Mm -hmm. Whereas us, the moment our order gets taken in Paris, they the factory starts making it and it takes them six months to make it from beginning to end. So we need to... You need the whole window. We need we have the whole, like, for, for the most part, most of our manufacturers, we work, they, they work exclusively for Story. Oh, not, wow. to get, not to get too into the nitty gritty of, like, the business, but mm. do you, I know you are in a lot of stores. Do you want to be in more stores or do you want to, like... Maintain it. Do you want to grow the D to C? Uh, a lot of a lot of brands I feel like are just kind of like, wait, why are we killing yeah. ourselves to meet wholesale uh, orders when we can just kind of focus on building our own brand? Yeah, it's yeah. Uh, I c I understand that thought too, but you can't really control that stuff. I don't know if you can. We're we're just kind of just following what works, what works for us. Like dropping brands, pr dropping stores that don't sell it very well. Mm. Increasing with ones that do. I think that that's Billy, smart. Billy that's would say, <laughs> yeah. I mean, we our approach to everything is just to like try and be a bit chill about it and not mm. overstretch ourselves so that this kind of stuff does matter. Of course, it matters. Like we have to pay salaries, but we kind of operate in a way that if we lost a bunch of stores, we wouldn't we wouldn't die as a brand, right? Um. So, but to answer your question, yeah, we'd, it'd be nice to be in some more stores. If we lost some stores, that'd be fine. We are growing our D to C. Um. It's all about like. Just like having marginal gains here, here, there, and everywhere, and, and it's like a building an ecosystem where everything works. Because I know some brands just do DTC, mm -hmm. like AC Nice, etc. And I get, and I get how that works, but it has its own problems. And then selling wholesale only is great, but it has its own problems. And we're trying to find some Damn, like nice middle sucks. ground. Sucks. Yeah, it's <laughs> all good. No, oh no, this is all good stuff. Yeah, it's all good. No, <laughs> to be it's clear, all, no, it is all good. Because like when you sell wholesale, like it, it's it, it, it's so hard, but. Those stores have their own marketing. They post right. on Instagram about right. you, and like, you, if you're in a good store, that kind of that that tells that tells people, oh, you're a good brand, and this is your. It's your validating. Yeah, it's validating exactly, and it kind of contextualizes you in all these different places, and without you having to like put money in. Mm -hmm. And then D to C, like the best thing is like we have our own customer service, which is like. Oh, the best thing is those fat margins. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not better margins, better control of the experience. I love our website. The way stuff is sent to people, it's like so perfect. Yeah. Um. Yeah. That's. That's kind of where we're at. Where, where's Story? Like, obviously, there we know about the customer base here. I'm sure it's like hugely popular in the UK. Like, where's Story popular that maybe we might surprise us? Uh, I don't think it would be anywhere that would surprise you. I think it's it's here, London, uh, West Coast, and Japan? then and then Japan. Yeah, oh, South Korea. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. South Korea is a big market. Massive. Probably it's our fastest growing market. Well, maybe one of our biggest markets. Second biggest market. Billy wow. Billy. Damn. Number two. Yeah. Yeah. Shout out Soul, baby. <laughs> any any K pop members ever worn your shit? Oh yeah, plenty. Oh fine. Yeah, plenty. And did the sales just immediately go yeah. skyrocket? Maybe. Yeah. The that that kind of inf influencer celebrity marketing doesn't really work that much. <laughs> um but, but it but does yeah, when it's so. K-pop, dude. Yeah, maybe. I, I haven't noticed any spikes. The biggest spike uh, for us on our website was when Kyrie Irving wore one of our hats. Really? Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> and I was, uh, I was like, oh, that's cool. I'm going to repost Speaking of this. aliens I re and <laughs> Egypt. I, re I reposted it, and someone was immediately like, take that down. <laughs> <laughs> oh, damn. <laughs> I still haven't got to the bottom of what all that's about. I, th I think people... Uh, well, listen, he gets a bad rap to hey some man, degree, hey, but he hey. has some interesting yeah. ideas. He's got some great points. Let's hear him out. Mm -hmm. Let's hear him out. And then the second was um, the same hat Ariana Grande wore. Ooh. And, uh, that, that, that got some... What about Kendrick? Yeah. Uh, K-Dot. Yeah, he's worn some of our stuff. Yeah, yeah. But it's from K-Pop to K-Dot. I don't, I don't know. I didn't, we didn't see... I mean, when that, when that guy Kyrie Irving wore our stuff, I think we sold like 
um, I mean, a huge number of hats. A uh, number of hats we wouldn't we wouldn't have made in like five years. Damn, who knew that Kyrie Irving was? That's the crazy. John's mm-hmm. influencer of the of the year. Yeah, yeah. When I sent you, because I remember seeing Kendrick on like just like a fashion celeb page, mm-hmm. and I sent it to you. And you're like, oh, that's cool. I didn't even know. <laughs> it was like, yeah. oh well, shit, because we haven't got a press function, so I've got no <laughs> idea when any of this stuff happens. So it's literally just stylists being like, oh, I like this thing. I'm gonna buy it for my client. There are stylists I reach out to. I'm like, I really like the way you're styling stuff. Uh, but yeah, we barely ever do any of that kind of stuff. Do you give a shit about that or no? You don't give a fuck. I know it's very, uh, I know it's very uncool to 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 give a shit, but I kind of do and I kind of don't. It depend. I would love like people that I really like and admire to wear it. Like, Ooh. as for example. Oh, I knew. I thought you were gonna ask that. Um, David Beckham. <laughs> <laughs> Bex. Yeah. Mm. The the Queen of King, England. King uh, Charles. The King of England. The Queen is dead. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> Because all the people I really like, I, I can't see them wearing stories. Like, oh, really? Like Nick Cave, where he just wears suits yeah. all the time. Um, I have to get back to you on that one. I can't. I can't Nick Cave, that's cool. He can wear like you a funky, sound dope. He can wear like a funky scarf. Yeah. Yeah, or maybe like a t shirt or something. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Like a belt. I mean, Kendrick wearing our stuff, that's really cool. Um, I, actually, the, the honest truth is, I don't really, I don't actually really care about that kind of celebrity stuff. Neither does Katie. So, yeah. Okay. It can always be a little bit cringe. Yeah, I guess it depends how it's then like amplified by the brand itself, right? Like it's the it's that level of celebrity that is a bit cringe. Like you guys were you've got you guys got your own niche and you like your thing like you guys were in it. Let's love that. that mm. that's, that's you should like definitely send us free shit. You're right. Yeah. I agree. <laughs> that's right. a good yeah, call. Sure. Smart. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I, I, re- I really I really love that level of stuff because it feels like there's like a strata of like camaraderie and like noticing each other and seeing what each other does. Yeah, but the community. Part, yeah. And there's also an assumption when someone else wears something that, that's like in the higher sphere that they've been given it or it's a market or it's a PR thing. Or they're being that's paid to wear it. Yeah. And that's, that's and when it's it worst. gets a bit, then it, that's when I'm like, mm, not sure. Interesting. Yeah. Kyrie yeah. wearing shit. But Woo. to be clear, Story has never paid anyone to wear anything. No way. <laughs> <laughs> Just want to no get way. it on the record. We can't uh, afford that. <laughs> <laughs> what? When did you know that the brand maybe had like staying power? Like was there a moment where it's just like, oh shit, I think we're onto something here? Like it's going from a dream to a reality. Um in twenty nineteen, which isn't even that long ago, me so and Katie six <laughs> years into the brand. <laughs> me and Katie left our jobs and took a salary of five hundred pounds a month. And then I was like, We've made it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just the fact you could pay yourself that yeah. broke ass fee. Yeah. Wait, yeah. For six years you were doing this on the side, just like working nights and weekends. Yeah, even oh, yeah, God. for six years. It could have been yeah, it was April twenty nineteen. Yeah, we were doing it on the side. And then we were doing it for five hundred pounds uh, for, for for ages and ages. And how much do you pay yourself now? <laughs> we're we're in the money section already. Yeah, <laughs> not much. What's five hundred sixty thousand? No, six thousand six thousand pounds a year. That's what your salary yeah, was. Tiny. Yikes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we were we were, you know, it's very like flashy to be like in at, at, at our at our um, die houses and stuff in in other countries, but it was mostly out of necessity, like so that because you know they've got. We could live somewhere cheaper. If not, if not there, then we were at our parents' houses, like slumming it, uh, living on a fucking boat. Living, on, yeah, on, <laughs> living on like a, a, pe- boat. Like a pensioner. Yeah, we were. Yeah, we was really, 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 really. We were, we were doing it right now. We have to because we got a kid. Right, right. So we have to start extracting. You money. are responsible for the future of a human being now. Yeah. <laughs> and then, um, so we start taking that little salary. We hired someone who we paid like five times more than us. And we also did a started talking to Reebok to do a collab. Mm. And at that point, it was like okay, the beatnik, the freaknik. Yeah, we did a beatnik. <laughs> Yeah. What about like uh, I don't know. I just there's a moment where I think it was the your pullovers, yeah. which I would say is like your signature piece, mm-hmm. with either the crochet across the waist or the two palms. Mm-hmm. That motif. Yeah. When I saw that, and then I started seeing that like on a lot of people mm-hmm. wearing it, a lot of cool guys wearing it, and just like all over the internet. That's when it was like, oh shit! Like story MFG's kind of like they're onto something here. Mm-hmm. Was it? Has there been like a number one bestseller throughout the years? Probably both of those things. Yeah, that you oh, said. No. Yeah. So that's I mean, where perception is reality, where we're seeing yeah. it and we assume it is, and it is. Yeah, yeah. No, it is. That's yeah. And then most recently, this crochet hats, but we kind of, but all True. of those things start to become like they kind of weigh down a brand. So oh, really? We, like, we, I, we, I don't think the last collection we put either of those in. And but like by design to like move. Yeah, you got to move it on because we 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 move on Should the we collection. Stop selling mesh shorts. <laughs> <laughs> we yes. Move, we would, <laughs> We, we keep like a bit of the collection the same and move on like right. half of it every season and then people kept coming back and like hey it hasn't changed but it oh. has changed hmm. they're right. just seeing right. like these two things still so we have to like take them out for people to and then we did and people were like wow it's so fresh <laughs> <laughs> people are fucking Addition stupid by subtraction. yeah people are idiots yeah. what uh sells like shit what does it <laughs> at all um, well, those things didn't for for ages and ages and ages until like until until was, yeah well until like. Until like Bodhi got big. And Ooh, here we go. And then like other brands, other brands like you know started filling in, filling in the spaces and kind of like it and like creating like a style tribe. And then people were like, okay, cool, I get it, I get it now. Um, they broke down the door for you. 
Yeah, I mean, we I think we started at the same time. We we're doing similar stuff at the same time, but you know, they're much bigger, much faster, much much yeah, you know, in, in more advantage advantage stage place. How frequently do people mix up Bodhi and Story MFG? Um, not sure, not sure. I I feel like we got yeah, probably probably pretty often actually. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Is that <laughs> is that flattering? Is that annoying? Do you not even give a fuck? Uh, there's a f- sense of it where I'm like, I hope they don't think we're biting. But oh, but, but, interesting. But, but I do also think that anybody would know that we were doing the same sort of stuff, like the stuff we've been doing. There's some stuff we we're doing earlier. It's all referencing the same stuff. Uh, some stuff. I mean, actually, uh, most of our collection doesn't look like that, but it's just the popular stuff that's because it's like a thing now. Right. A trend, like crochet, and that that mm-hmm. kind of stuff. Um, it doesn't bother me. No, I I I don't find it flattering either. <laughs> the only the other thing the only other thing is that like if we see someone doing something else, we're like okay, we don't do that then, right? Because you don't want to be you don't want to be seen to be like biting someone else. Yeah. Do you see people biting you? Yeah, yeah, all the time. Yeah. Do you call them out or do you just let it rock? Used to. Yeah. Used really? To, yeah, I used to it a lot. And um, pop your shit. Someone was like, he's just coming across quite bitter. <laughs> Really? Um, yeah. What would you What would you do? Just be like, "Yo, what up, Brand X?" Like yeah. crazy. How similar the show <laughs> looks, huh? Dick. Yeah. I'd be like, <laughs> I would only do it if it was like undeniable, like a right. straight rip off. Yeah, a straight rip off. Like to, so we design our own fabrics, which is something that I don't think many, most people b- would bother with because it's, you know, it's a long, much longer process. But we do that too. Yeah, <laughs> of course. <I> yeah, think. <laughs> yeah. We do. We're like, hey, can oh, this no, blue do. be green? Right. And yeah. then like, you know, <laughs> no, we do. Like, yes. Um. So we we'll we we might do like, you might get like a block print, and then like, from afar, it kind of looks like a block print. It reads like a block print, but we've designed the print, uh, so it's got like story written in it. Or got something. it. Or there's, you know, I feel like when you're working with artisans, you want to have some kind of collaboration in the process. So. I would call someone out if I saw that exact print on someone if else. If they like said story <laughs> in their brand, like they're... <laughs> it's ha- it's what the happened. Fuck? Wow, dude. It's happened. There's, it's happened. Shameless. Yeah. Oh, it's like the exact same print. Do they even know? Well, I've, t- I've told them. Yeah, I've told... I and they're like, oh, shit. By the way, can you fucking read, guy? Because it says <laughs> my brand's name on your product. What I like to do is a little bit bitchy is be like, hey, this is our fabric, and not say all of the other stuff. And then they can be like, hey, man, you don't own this thing. You don't. You do you pa- do you patent your or trademark or whatever the fuck you really do over there? That stuff. What we can't, we, we can't really pay, you can't really do any of that stuff. It doesn't we can't, it's not really enforceable. Okay. Um, Are those uh, the factories like like well you have ex- they have there's extra yardage and they're like hey yeah that's what happens sometimes yeah. Damn, dude. sometimes it's just like undermined by the fucking overtaken. makers. Yeah. yeah. It'd be your own. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Truly. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the theft is coming from inside the house, yeah. dude. It'd be your own loomers inside the factory. Yeah. Damn, bro, that's crazy. So. uh <laughs> What is like your least favorite thing about the menswear industry or just like the clothing industry 10 years in? Uh, you've seen it all. You've done it all. You've said it all. Um, you're saying a lot now, which is great. But yeah, <laughs> like, is there one thing that really just gets stuck in your craw, the beady in your bonnet every time? Those, these are American idioms. I don't know if you know what they mean. <laughs> um, what, what pisses you off? Nothing piss, Nothing specifically pisses me off. One thing I find found difficult, we have found difficult over the years, is that just that m- me and Katie are such outsiders uh, to the whole thing and we have no network at all. And then and we, 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 we started the story and then we'd see other brands like just just like rocket past us mm. so fast because they like have money or have a network and it, it feels like a shame. We, we navigate through it. It's completely fine, but it feels like a shame for other people. Like unless you're in the UK, unless you're like Central St. Martins and mm-hmm. you've got BFC and all that kind of stuff, it feels like there's so little opportunity. There's like almost no opportunity. And then more recently, there's like, so much hoo-ha about getting non-white people in the business, but mm-hmm. it just feels so false. And like it doesn't. And I've talked to people who have, who have been who have been like helped, and they just it's not real. And so the thing that I the thing that I hate most is like how hard it is to get into, and then how much money is extracted from you like the moment you step in the door. That you get you get like so much. Um, it's so um, predatory. Mm. It's so predatory. You get agents who want so much money. PR people who want loads of money. Everybody's like asking for money when like people don't got yeah people are just starting out getting used and abused. Yeah, getting fucking sucked off by these vampire squids. <laughs> are you are you guys trying to like remain outside of that system as you have kind of built up your business in a way where you said you started out as outsiders, but now you kind of you said yourself you kind of have to play the game, right? Yeah, I mean, and in some and in some in some places we are like the main not not the main, but we're we're part of the status quo, like. Uh, I used to like, I used to very, I used to be really proud to be like, hey, we're really, we're like the least connected people 
always, but it's not really true anymore. Actually, Billy was saying that to me. I was like, I'm the worst cut express. Billy was like, no, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> you are now the establishment. Yeah, you are the dude. man. Yeah. You became everything um, that you hated. Yeah. yeah. No, I'm Fucking sellout. <laughs> you either die a hero or you become a successful brand. Yeah, yeah. for real. <laughs> uh, we stay out of certain things. Like, I probably won't name them here, but like, I don't think that we'd have anything to do with the UFC. There's really no, no, there's no point. Um, but yeah. from our from That's over the here, fashion council. Mm, yeah. From over here, like looking at what like BFC and, and the 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 network or infrastructure that exists there for like supporting fashion, it seems like there's more support over there than in America, mm -hmm. where you have like the the CFDA and all this bullshit, which is just like uh, still predatory, still mm -hmm. like absolutely just vampire squid sucking the lifeblood out of anything that has like a remote chance of taking off. But it, it's, that's why I think that, like, New York has never really produced, like, a homegrown hero th in the way that we do see, like, a lot of, like, fire talent coming out of the UK with where they do have support. But it's still just as fucked up a situation as maybe anywhere else. Yeah, I mean, the thing that I would say was, like, is, like, that you, no one really needs those guys. Right. But the fact that they're around and they, they th makes you feel like you need them. So you're kind of always chasing mm. them instead of doing the other stuff. Right. Instead of, like, focusing on things that do matter, like, your margins and... And like your production and that kind of stuff, no one needs them. They're they're so old. Well, school. that's the that's the grand charade, right? They have to make you think that, or yeah. else people will be like, "Wait, why the fuck does this shit exist? Yeah. Like, who I cares?" Mean, they hold up things that you don't need to be doing, like doing fashion shows. So few people care about it. It's so expensive. Uh, yeah, you don't need it. You right. Kate, you got through fine. Have you ever done a any had any grand designs of a fashion show or presentation or anything? Uh, we did a presentation just because of that like thing of like us being like we're not going to do a bunch of stuff, but then we then it's like okay, but which stuff actually do we want to <laughs> do? So we did a presentation once. It was ho it was very successful. How much money did you lose? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think we spent like four thousand pounds, which is oh, tiny. That's not that much. Tiny compared. And we did a pub quiz, uh, and we did a presentation, and it was massively successful by all metrics. But there's a thing in London. I, I don't know if anyone really talks about it, but like London Fashion Week, it, there's something a bit pathos about it because it's on. Whenever it's on, people are always like, yeah, London Fashion Week sucks. But, like, so many people spend so much money to do it. Yeah. So I feel like it used to be fucking fire, but has really fallen off. London Men's was gas. Yeah. It, for I a few years there. It's never, it hasn't changed. It is what it is, and it is what it's always been. It's just a, like, it's just a meme to, check to right. kind of put it down. But a lot of that of talent has left, though. Like, Grace and Martine, I don't think show at London anymore. Uh, London Fashion Week anymore, I have right? no idea. Yeah. We don't, They've moved we don't, to Paris. That, yeah. And that's what happened in New York to like a lot of like, you know, your Tom Browns or whatever. And even now with um, Bodie, they're, they're not shown here. Oh, I, suppose it's, I suppose it's like less and less brands feel the need to do a show. There's less need for so many different shows and so many places. And or if you're going to spend the money to do the show presentation, you're like, uh, yeah, we're going to do it in Paris mm -hmm. where it yeah. actually matters. <laughs> Paris does matter. Yeah, like that really. is the one that does does really matter because that's where you also do your sales. So you might as well sure. also have, if you've got the clothes there, you've got everything there, you might as well do it. Also just a completely different vibe. Like Paris feels like going to Glastonbury. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like it's, it's, it's just like... Woo, everyone's clothes, there. yeah! <laughs> it's a bit muddy. Yeah. Um, all right, so in the 10 years, as you've kind of grown and become like, you know, part of the establishment maybe... Where have you sacrificed your morals the most? <laughs> 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 what have you done where you're just like, oh, fuck. I, you know, I thought it was punk rock, but like, I guess I got to do it. I was thinking about this today. It's, I'm glad that I was because otherwise I wouldn't know how to answer this. But we <laughs> have this thing where I was like, the thing that I hate most is when people take work away from people, especially when you're working with craftspeople. So I'm like, okay, who, whoever we work with, we're going to work with them forever. Mm. And we're never gonna work with, uh, you know, we're gonna make a commitment to them. How naive! Some, <laughs> fuck, sometime, some Damn. people make it so hard to work with them, and they don't want to work with you. And then you're like, uh, we're holding on to work with them because of this like weird ethic. And they're like, we don't want to work with you anymore. <laughs> yeah, so break up with yeah. me, please. So there, so there's probably like the the one thing. Is that because you're like scale, like get to make more shit, or they're just sh not great at <laughs> partnering up? Um, <laughs> it's because sometimes like these. We've got to have like a high level of, we've got, there's so many chaotic factors in making a garment. Like the, the dye is always, you know, dependent on the, on the, on the weather and, mm. and that kind of stuff. So there's things that where we can control them, yeah. they have to not be chaotic. Right. Like the sewing or the time or communication. Those things like have to be really on point. So it's where, where people are like, I can't be that communicative or I don't want to, I don't want to do this work because I've got other work, which is much easier. They don't, they're not, they're not so mm. specific about what they need. Uh, that yeah, that's what happens. So it's taking work away from artisans and craft people. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's, that's cool. Story. What, what's your what's your favorite part about like just the whole creative process? <sighs> I just I, I spe me specifically yeah. I like the natural dyes. Yeah, I'm really like that's, that's what your passion is. Yeah, about. that is my passion. Katie, she doesn't 
doesn't doesn't isn't as passionate. She's really into. She keeps her hands clean, literally. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> she's she's like more into the like the the, the garment design stuff mm. and, and all all the other kind of production stuff. But me, is that, is. is that like? And obviously, there's this big team now. But is that like a little bit of the right brain, left brain that makes you guys like a good duo? And in, just in terms of like not about your marriage, but in terms of the professional working relationship element. Yeah, I don't know how people do it on their own. Like, yeah, there's so many brands that are just one person. I don't know who they, who do they talk to. Like, how do you work something out <laughs> themselves? Their therapist. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and we got that too. But we, yeah, yeah. I think me, me, the us, us having different opinions on stuff and working on different things at the same time it's it's fantastic it's it's unbelievable it's also why our marriage is so good is that we can just trust each other to do the something and then if we don't like it we can trust each other to just say i don't like that mm. and not get offended and right. like it's different when you work that honest them. sounding board that's never going to lie to you because you've made a lifelong commitment yeah and you can it just cuts out a lot of time to be able to like i hate that and then mm. everyone <laughs> moves on even though sometimes it is a bit hurtful. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone can just This move natural on. die sucks. Yeah. Yeah. Is there something that you loved and she was like, eh. uh, All the time. Oh, yeah. yeah like, <laughs> ten, like 10 times a day. And who's, and who's, who's usually more correct? Is it her? She's mm, definitely. I, I would say it's pretty half and half. Okay. okay. So yeah, there's yeah. no better half. No. I mean, we always <laughs> lord over each other the things where, where one of us was like, that sucks. And then it just like turns out to be a massive success. Yeah. Kyrie wore my hat. <laughs> I told you. Yeah. Is that how you guys You're sleeping on the couch? <laughs> <laughs> is that how you guys split up the work? Is that you're more focused on like the the finishing techniques and she's on like the foundational like garment pattern making? Um in the past it was more like I was doing we we split everything. It's really hard to say actually. We do like half of each thing. <laughs> but, uh, she not efficient at all, my friend. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, not at all. Like, um, but all right, I designed the left side of the shirt, <laughs> yeah. you designed the right side. What and sleep they do, do you not want match. today? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, now she's doing. She's much better with certain things like money. Uh, so <laughs> she does all the money stuff, okay. and I'm better at um, talking about the brand and doing the the engagement stuff. But dude's rock type shit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. just <laughs> hopping on a pod with the fellas while your but wife keeps the checkbook balanced. <laughs> <laughs> but when it comes to like designing the collections from like at the start, we're just we're both we're both doing it. it have, do you have to like? leave the work at, like when you leave the office like is it like no more work talk like this is now yeah. your husband and wife <laughs> building a home building a family and yeah. like how do you not let the work affect the relationship or vice versa like is uh, yeah we're affected forever for ages it's only in the last like two years and since we had a kid that we've actually been able to cut it i've been saying forever i, I don't want to talk about work after work and she's all, she's like completely like she's the type of person where she can be like Hey, we're running out of money, and then just go, and then at, at nine p.m. and then go to sleep at like <laughs> five past nine, and I'm like lying in bed, with my eyes open. So we've had lots and lots of like disagreements about that kind of thing. So we do leave it. We do leave it at home. Even even now, like even now during the workday, sometimes we sit next to each other, and someone asks me a question, and I'm like, ask Katie, and she's like right next to me, <laughs> just on Slack. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we do we do have to split things because it's yeah, it really affects your 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 home life. Yeah. Right. You need that work life balance. Yeah, you do, and like. Y yeah, we, we, we used to, have, everything used to be out of our house too. It's Oof. pretty oh recently God, that dude. it's not. So it's like impossible to leave work at work when work is home and home is yeah, work. Yeah, yeah, that's how I am. Yeah. <laughs> this is my home. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. James yeah. is lying like in bed at night being like, fuck, dude. Yeah, yeah basically. Yeah. Yeah. I hate Wait, this. so how is, so your kid is two now, you said? Yeah. How has uh, raising a child, like, has that affected the, d the approach to the creative side at all or like any aspect of the business? Um, Besides, you're like, oh shit, we got to make some money now. Yeah, that uni ain't free. cheap, man. <laughs> yeah, that last <laughs> thing is probably the biggest thing. Like, I feel like we need to make sure that we have some security as a as a couple to keep, to keep going forward. Um, but no, all of the things that I cared about are all the things that th that like people seem to care about after they've got a kid, like about the planet, about the kind of planet we're leaving, about the kind of people we want to be remembered as, mm -hmm. about the kind of work we do. We c cared about that before, and I'm, and I meet parents like. Hey, but now you mean it. It's <laughs> not. <laughs> it's no, not just I mean, fucking I mean bullshit. That, like, <laughs> I've just suddenly realized. I'm like, okay, well. I've Feel like I felt like that for for a while. Um, I think about you know I think about things a lot. We're having a kid, like what we're putting on his body, what we're putting in his body, mm -hmm. that kind of stuff, and it makes me feel like double proud about the kind of work we're doing at Story because we've always been like really fixated on that kind of stuff. Do you have um, as a parent who cares about what goes on and into your child? And we've talked about Kyrie Irving. Do you have like a crazy <laughs> out there like conspiracy theory level like health and wellness take that you want to share with us? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. No, you don't want to share it, or no, you don't have it? <laughs> I don't think we have one. I mean, we're both vegan. Right. So we've been vegan, and we've been vegan since since before the brand started. I, I just, it's certainly not a conspiracy. I think everyone knows, like, the amount of plastic that's going into our bodies. Yeah. It's pretty horrendous. Um, so we try and keep it out as much as possible. But otherwise, like, I, I also want our kid and us to live, like, a normal life. Mm -hmm. It's like, 
there's some not in a bunker afraid yeah. of the, the future yeah. yeah not get super super weird like yeah yeah so did, you, did your kid have drip <laughs> yeah yeah? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Does he only wear, is he covered his, in his papa's own sh- old sh- own shit? No, <laughs> unfortunately not. No, because, I mean, kids grow so quickly, it's hard to. He, right. he wears a little a little hat nice. that we make. Um, but he, like, I feel like toddlers got, like, such a good body type. <laughs> clothes, they're always, like, short yeah, and back. Yeah, toddlers are like, hot, dude. I agree, <laughs> man. That was a good, I mean, good call. <laughs> that's Warch's that. that's <laughs> hottest take. I'm not saying that, no. Um, but like, yeah, all the clothes look so good. And sometimes we l- I look at his outfits. And I'm like, man, we should make that for grown ups. Damn, I wish I was chubby. And <laughs> yeah, what? <laughs> built like a brick shit house, dude. I mean, that's kind of like a little bit of a. It's not. It's like an open secret story. Like sometimes we make stuff that's like that a design influence is making children's clothes for adults. Like children's clothing has got such cool uh, proportions, like mm. bigger, po- slightly bigger pockets, like slight, slightly weird. Like you know when like Japanese sites I recent, uh, recently found out like the shoes always look better. It's because they shoot this like a size four. Yeah, well that absolutely, dude. The smaller the shoe, the better the photo. Yeah, hundred percent. And so it's the same with jackets. You take like yeah. a tiny little Carhartt kids jacket yeah. and blow that up to a thing size. It's just the best. It's the opposite of a dick pic, you know. Mm. The smaller the yeah. better. Better so, pick. Uh, <laughs> the opposite of Benjamin Button's penis <laughs> disease. Um, do you have a favorite piece that you've ever designed? Forget the best sellers. Forget like. What doesn't sell? Forget you know, what Kyrie yeah. and Ken, Ken, Kenny have worn, but like, yeah, Saeed's yeah. Grail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've got a jacket called the Sunday Jacket. It's mm-hmm. like the second or third thing we've ever made. Um, it's and it's just like a denim jacket, but it's made from a hand wo- hand loomed, hand woven jacket woven by these like old ladies in in in, t- in Thailand, and they grow the cotton themselves, they dye it themselves, they weave cop. it themselves, and it just it's just it was just like a perfect it was like a perfect hit, like because it's beautiful wearable and it wears so nicely that like everyone like it, how it ages it ages beautifully it's just so incredible and it ages quite fast too which is like mm. it's nice it's like, like nice. benjamin button yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. um <laughs> sure. yeah that's my favorite and it's also like we've had it forever so it's one of the and it's one of those things it's a mainstay yeah i think we'll have it forever forever least favorite <laughs> um least favorite you love you love all your Johns. Equally. I mean, have you have you seen like a customer wearing something and you're like, yeah, yikes! Sure. I designed that. Ugh. Fuck. Ugh. We've made stuff. <laughs> I'll buy that off you. <laughs> yeah. I can't think of a specific thing, but I pay to destroy that. <laughs> I can't think of a specific thing, but there's been times where we've been we've been counselled to make like a certain thing that neither me nor Katie would wear, like a certain type of dress or something. And because is, is that like you're like merchandisers, or like s- like, like sale? Tr- we okay. don't do it anymore. We did it like once or twice, like especially when we were starting women's wear. Right. We'd be like. Because Katie dresses quite, she does dress very feminine, but her her she's more tomboyish. I would say she likes more menswear pieces. So when we were starting women's wear, women's wear stores were like, "Hey, let's be really helpful to you and tell you, <laughs> you, know, you should make this thing." And then we make it, and we just hate it. Right. And then it also does badly. <laughs> uh, and then I'm just angry about it. And also, nobody starts, wins. <laughs> yeah, no one wins. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, you stopped doing that. Yeah, we. Yeah. I mean, we. Yeah, we didn't have to do that very long. Yeah. Well, you're only here in New York for a few days, mm-hmm. sadly. Um, or, you know, we, we need you to come over and like so we can do have a proper hang, proper pints. Can vegans drink beer? Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> right, most right. beer. All right, most some beer there isn't. Really? Oh, yeah. What's animal products now? Uh, they use like a, it's like a something from a fish's gut to clarify <laughs> it. What the fuck? Yeah, it sounds delicious. <laughs> um, <laughs> who dresses better, men in New York City or men in London? In your experience, because uh, I feel like that is the current rivalry. Yeah. Right now. I've only seen a very thin slice of New York dressing. Like I've staying right now in that dime squareish area okay <laughs> and that's, that's kind of close to where so we you're at before. the center of the zeitgeist and i think it's not very it's you're not, not a fan of the mullets and the jorts you, you don't like jorts yeah. <laughs> so it's so it's like uh, i don't know anywhere <laughs> in england where everyone dresses so similar to each other interesting i think that i feel like actually like the dime square bushwick like raver shit is kind of actually draws a lot of inspiration from yeah. london rave scene yeah, that you guys used to wear yeah but i feel like if you meet a group of like four friends they're all, they all, they're not all dressed the same in England. Mm. But here they but are. Here they are. Yeah. Just like clones of each other. Yeah, I, I mean, that's just my feeling, my very small amount of time. I feel like people in London are better dressed. Ooh. Wow. Is it more diversity so in how they're doing it? Uh, it's quieter. Mm. It's a little bit more sure of themselves, a little bit less trend-led. Uh, Sounds like we got another fucking English snob on the show. <laughs> 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 But I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Like people in London, l- the nice thing about New York. You wouldn't be saying this if it was 1776, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, scoreboard, bitch. <laughs> uh, Tax these Johns. <laughs> I just feel like I feel like there's like a thing where like clothes are wearing a person rather than the other. Oh, way for sure. And you see that a lot in and New York like right I now. Let's see it more here and less mm. less in England. And that's not a bad thing. Like I feel like people are more experimental here. That breeds better stuff eventually. 
but in England, people are a bit worried. They're a bit s- wor- more worried about being silly, and so <laughs> they dress a bit quieter. I think also the the <laughs> sartorial traditions in the UK are much stronger yeah. in history than they are here. Yeah, yeah. You guys yeah. got Savile Row. You know, yeah, ever heard one. of it? I don't know anyone that dresses. <laughs> <Yeah. can afford laughs> but I mean that, but like, not even that, but just like uh, a hooliganism, a, 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 a more culture, like, a more entrenched emphasis on aesthetics, yeah, and like subcultures as well. Like, and I feel like style tribes change less frequently in England. Like, you kind of go through one or two in your life, where I feel like there's like several here every 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 few months, especially in New York. Yeah, yeah. I mean, especially with young people. Lawrence and I were at some Bushwick guys rave last night, and we were looking around, and just like, damn, like the memes are so true. Yeah, but everyone did look awesome and was having a right. great time, yeah, and I just yeah. felt old. So then I was like, fuck, who am I to judge? Well, you were the only guy with a blazer. <laughs> <in there. laughs> I you was two I mile did, radius. I did wear a blazer <laughs> to a rave like a dumbass. <laughs> <laughs> but you guys have got specific styles, like you've calcified what your style is. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Yeah. 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 What do as a Brit? What did you think about that? Like, and I don't know if you saw this. I'm assuming you did, but that bloke core moment that happened, like where literally. These same guys that were at this rave last night for a while are like wearing soccer jerseys f- or kits, as you say, for cl- kits. for clubs that they have no idea where they're Still from. Going, I think, right? Yeah. What do you th- What do you think about that? I mean, I don't. I've never. I've never been into football or or, or any of that stuff. I, I like it. I think it looks good. I feel like for too long those kinds of that kind of look has been uh, ignored. I'm glad that people are like, hey, it's a look. Mm. Uh, no, I think it looks good. I think it. I think it looks. I think it looks great. I wonder what right. I wonder what Billy would say. <laughs> 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 well, okay, so if you're not getting inspiration from Times Square <laughs> mullet ass motherfuckers, where does story MFG draw inspiration from? You kind of referenced a few times where you're like, yeah, like we are referencing similar things to Bodhi, but like what what are those things that are really informing your brand? I mean it's so cliche, but it's vintage. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh vintage workwear, like most specifically. And then Vintage UK workwear? Uh yeah, it started that way. I mean we kind of have a lot of our initial shapes are all like old British workwear. And it I was see it in, I see it in the big pants. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And it's kind of like th- there, big aren't trowel. Really, there aren't many people that do that kind of thing, like apart from Nigel Cable and mm, the God. And Shout out Big Nigel. <laughs> big um, Nigel. And but now we do reference like a lot, just like a lot more different vintage stuff. Vintage British workwear, British American workwear, Japanese workwear, French workwear a lot. Sure. That kind of stuff. And then the other thing that we're inspired by is like outdoors and the outdoors and um, vintage outdoor gear too. Like um, vintage kind of gorp hiking. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, again, I know that's kind of, it's kind of a thing in itself at the moment. But the thing that I, uh, gorp, gorp is like, it's like, I feel like I've had enough of it. Mm. As, just as everybody has. Um, but the thing that's kind of like left off is that, is that like going out, you s- like go, all those old vintage pa- L. Bean and Patagonia things, they're just wearing cotton, right, cotton stuff. Yeah. And then like at some point, something happened where like now you've got to wear you got to wear, like, full plastic to get on the train. <laughs> and, like, it's a bit ridiculous. Full synthetic, dude. Yeah. Like, e- like yeah, like, early the, st- the stone masons, stone cutters, stone masons, mm-hmm. like, Yves like Chouinard, like, they were all just wearing, like, cotton. It was all cotton. Natural fibers. It was all cotton and cotton f- and, and fleece, but it was just, like, uh, yeah, like, in more generous cuts where they could actually, like, scale fucking. Yeah, and that stuff is the best. And... The argument is always like, yeah, hey, but what if it rains? You're like, okay, just we just won't go walking if it's going <laughs> to rain. Like, we love going outdoors. You nip into the pub for a quick <laughs> shopper. Yeah. yeah, we love going hiking. We love camping. I don't have an Arcteryx jacket. Don't don't need it. Really? Right. Yeah. Have you ever gotten fucked up by like <laughs> the weather? Yeah, but we just check the weather before we go <laughs> you out. We live in like a very notoriously uh, <laughs> rainy city. Yeah, and they still get by. Yeah, without, without any issue. And isn't like the weird thing with all of these fabrics that are made for performance outdoor stuff? It's the worst stuff for the environment, yeah, right? Terrible. Like it's so yeah. bad when they manufacture like it. The absolute absolute worst. Yeah, it's and, weird. and it's always and it's so so often just like really hidden what the bad part is. Like I saw a study recently that was said that some of these things are like lowering men's sperm counts. Ooh. The Wearing the gore the is yeah, making yeah. me not bust fat mm-hmm. ropes. Damn. What the fuck? Drinking the nut. Yeah. The, the hell? Fuck? Yeah. <laughs> it beads off. <laughs> I think I saw Kyrie Irving shared infographic on his Instagram <laughs> story about the same study. Fits, I don't know no, who, I don't know any of his. I wouldn't be surprised, dude. I'm so he's a flat earther. He believes the earth oh, is I flat. See. Um, <laughs> that's why he's like, oh, the shipping was so fast because yeah, the Earth is flat. <laughs> duh, <laughs> straight line. <laughs> wow. Okay. And I think he uh, shared a a link to a documentary oh, that was, was on Amazon that was like, Jews are the reason why the world is fucked right oh, now. Right? It was okay. anti semitic That yeah, was the, yeah. his biggest gaffe. Was all conspiracy theories, whether that was a bit or not aside. Is he had a little bit of an anti semitic moment? Was he like, I'm just asking questions. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Hey. Hey. I didn't make the documentary. I'm yeah, just right. saying this is out there. 
Okay. Yeah, you know? okay. I think it's yeah. a good point. I mean, this is why we don't we don't post about. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> this is why you should never post. Never post. Never post. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, only po- only tweet pee pee poo poo jokes. That's right. my rule. Yeah. Um, and you'll you'll be fine. So, what are some trends? Like we talked about bloat core. We talked about maybe like the turbo warrior gorp, and then more like maybe like the more mm-hmm. natural, mm-hmm. less intense gorp. What are some trends you want to see more of that I are maybe bubbling right I now? I think that like natural gorp, but not. Not in like a making like gorp shapes in natural materials. I feel like that's also kind of boring. I feel like just going outdoors in a t-shirt and shorts mm. and that kind of that as a me- brand message. I feel like that is going to come back. So I'm talking to brands like often and talking about that, and they're like, "Hey, yeah, we that's a good idea. Maybe we'll maybe we'll do that. Maybe we'll I make t-shirts. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, like making the outdoors more accessible, or at least talking about like you don't need to. So that yeah, you don't need to thing. be Batman to like go on a hike and have like a, a fun day with your friends. Yeah, that's what so I mean. you could we, we talked about this in the Fat Five where it's like, yo, if I show up to play tennis in like a t-shirt and shorts, like. If I show up in like dry fit head to toe, yeah. it's not gonna make me necessarily a better tennis player. Maybe <laughs> yeah. like point oh 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 one percent, right? Yeah, like it's not gonna do anything for you. <laughs> I mean, I do get, I do get why. Like, there's something about like footwear. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah, yeah. Footwear is different. I mean, that's that's yeah. That, that we do we do footwear collabs, and they're not they're not fully natural things. That's where we like play around with more synthetic stuff. Like mm-hmm. that makes it that makes a bit more that makes more sense. Um, but I, I I don't know about tr- yeah. I, I I couldn't answer. You know, Katie was a trend forecaster. Oh that yeah, was her main job before she was with story and i also once i found out about trend forecasting i was like okay cool i want to do that too so Hmm. i did a few reports but she was a proper trend forecaster so she would be the best person to talk about what the next trends are was she typically on the money with her trend forecasting oh yeah she was uh, she don't miss she's the best yeah she was she i'm talking about she's she's dead she is the best (laughs) (laughs) she's very much alive she's she's amazing she's paid she she was she was she was she was yeah, she's amazing. She knew her shit for sure. She really knew her shit. But th- th- it is a great point, and like like James said, it kind of got touched on a little bit previously. Um, but like, yeah, just wearing a t shirt and shorts, like it doesn't need to be some crazy fucking next level shit. No. If you're just like trying to have a fun day, yeah, that people really want to, or do an activity it. that right. you enjoy. Like, what I mean, people, people want to dress up. They want to, yeah, they want to dress up like Batman. And yeah. if it's just you know t-shirt what, and shorts, I'm not wearing <laughs> hockey pads. <laughs> <laughs> if it's just t shirt and shorts, like we go to places like Thailand, yes, where you can only really wear t-shirt and shorts and 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 converse <laughs> there that means like they have to fully put all of their interest into those things so like the price of a vintage t-shirt in vietnam in in, in thailand is extremely crazy mm. if you want to wear like an old bjork t-shirt that's like several thousand pounds Damn. Wow. it's like all they can all they can really enjoy right. and you can mm-hmm. buy like an old really expensive Damn, jacket for and, you ha- and you have to wear yellow on tuesdays right yeah. something like that something like that yeah the king's I color the oh, king's got favorite it. color Mm. The king who is a well, the new king is like a party boy, which is awesome. <laughs> what, are there any trends you want to you see you see out there that you wish would just fucking stop? Uh, no, not really. I'm not. I'm not. Uh, I don't really. I'm agnostic about all that kind of stuff. Okay. Yeah. You're not like a ha- like. Obviously, you not don't use or wear leather. But if James and I were like, yo, leather jackets for fall, are you like, man, be better, or do you are you kind of like? I mean, I how really, do you feel I in your really heart? Wish that no people were stopping really? leather. Really? Yeah, and fur and all that kind of stuff. Like there was a. There, it feels like the, the like movement a- away from that kind of stuff was really strong a few years ago, and that's kind of creeping back in. <laughs> there were just that some sucks. protesters at the coach show in New York. I don't know if anyone was watching. They're that, always outside <laughs> fucking Canada <laughs> Goose, dude. So it's un- like they live there. It's just completely unnecessary. I, and I'm with you on fur. What's yeah. the point of? But leather's not really, not really that different. I mean, just I know, but it looks so animals. fucking cool, dude. Yeah, well, I mean, but <laughs> and it's a natural material. It's a natural material <laughs> that like I mean, does the job of like yeah. these synthetics. True. However, my um, my point is that the the sooner we get away, it's, it's a natural material, but it's extremely un un, un what, unethical. One thing, if you take that away, mm-hmm. it's also really not um not uh, it's a very hard material to wear. You have to like inseminate a cow, get a cow, feed the cow, uh, and then Kill murder the murder yeah. it, take all of its skin off, and Snipe dispose its face of the rest off. of the stuff. Damn. Like if we stop using that stuff. Damn. Then all that just so a guy can get laid, right? Like it just seems <laughs> like looks really cool. <laughs> yeah, I can't remember the word I'm looking for. I can't remember the, the word I'm looking for, but it's inefficient. It's an inefficient right. way of getting. Mm-hmm. I mean, honestly, you talking out does make me feel a little gross for wearing leather. Like I'm not gonna <laughs> but, lie, but, but I ain't gonna and, stop. And I, I don't think synthetics are that good either. But right, you need like if we stop using like we know leather exists. It's it's a really great material. Like the world won't move away t- towards a better solution for it, like lab grown or whatever. Right. Unless we stop having, you know, make, making ch- making leather. Yeah. What about vegan leather? Are you a fan of like like uh, what, Nanushka out of um, yeah, the fuck are they out? Like Austria or some shit? Uh, there's some really cool ones like making stuff, but a lot of them are not real. Like as a brand, mm. like we get to find out. We're like, hey, just seen this leather that's made out of 
I don't know. Mushroom. Cacti. Ca- yeah, yeah, cactus something. leather is big. Something specific, right? And then, and then we talk to them, and they don't really have it, oh, right. or, uh. or it's or it's like it doesn't work, or it falls apart underwater. There are yeah. mushroom ones. Cactus was actually the name of the cow that we murdered. So <laughs> cactus is leather. Um, so, yeah. lo- but but hmm. more recently, there are, yeah, there are some. There's some mushrooms, not mushrooms, mycelium, but it's the same sort of thing. There right. are some, but because it's, it's new, it's super duper expensive. Mm. I'm, a, I'm a big fan of them. I'm not a big fan of the ones that are just like vegan leather but it's actually just plastic right oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> just robbing peter to <laughs> pay paul at that just, point this yeah is plastic. this is yeah. and this is also as bad speaking of mushrooms mm-hmm. mm. are story mfg clothes better to wear when you're on drugs i think so i couldn't possibly say okay i, so. I was to say are all clothes better to wear when you're on drugs in my experience <laughs> are magic mushrooms vegan yet right yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah super vegan whoa whoa you said that with a lot of enthusiasm well, so i've are, heard allegedly they're, they're, i know that i mean so i'm probably gonna bore the tits off you but there <laughs> are some mushrooms that are not vegan because they're grown from like the carcass of animals like cordyceps there are vegan versions of it now but like traditionally they're made from like ants mm. like the, they have to like they have to inject the ants with these Damn. with these things you really care about a bug's heads. life dude <laughs> oh, yeah and you're always questioning shit Always I've been killing lantern flies like a psychopath this summer, dude. Yeah. Yeah. You, you and your wife have been on it. <laughs> <laughs> um, Got that bloodlust. Right. Sorry. Clearly, <laughs> you're currently... You, do you like R&D, all the story, MFG stuff, like yourself? Like, do you wear tested? Do you make sure uh, that it's like... Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, obviously, because you're wearing story MFG, you're fucking swaggy every single day, 365. <laughs> Did you ever go through a personal style phase where, looking back, you now like cringe at how fucking trash you dressed back then? Maybe uh, maybe it's a product of the times. Maybe you were just trying to do something that wasn't. Maybe there wasn't a lot of storage on a houseboat. Yeah. Uh, I look back and I I would certainly see things I wouldn't wear anymore. But I looked cool at the time <laughs> during like the indie sleeves phase where everyone's dressed in like yeah. strokes. I've got loads of pictures of me like dressed exactly like the strokes. Really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, By the you have hair? <laughs> Pardon? Yeah, hair. Yeah, plen- I had plenty of hair. Okay. No, he was born bald. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, and it, and it looked great. I would definitely wear it. I felt really. I felt really. I felt Leather really jacket. Good. Yeah, yeah, it's pre-vegan. Ooh, okay. yeah, vintage, but sure, still. Um, but yeah, I mean, I just saw the strokes the other day. I saw them play, and they were dressed the same. And I was, and I, I would never wear that stuff, but they still look so fucking cool. We had the G, the J Crew show. No, is that where you saw them play? No, no. Oh, they've been touring that. Okay, did they do? Is this it from front to back? Was uh, it that? Yeah, yeah. No, no. They played like a bunch of different songs, even some like yeah. I was telling James, I think that uh, Julian Casablanca is the only forty-six-year-old man that could get away with just never wearing sleeves. Yeah, which yeah. is ridiculous. Yeah. He hasn't worn a they sleeve. All, they and all dressed y- exactly the same. Yeah. But you were <laughs> dressing exactly like the Strokes, the Hives, strokes, Libertines, the the the, yeah. the bands, yeah. the the, the Hives. I think they were like suits. They did. They, 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 they were all suited and yeah. booted. Yeah, yeah, love that. Love that look. <laughs> they ruled. And then before, but but. That was kind of like it was a great s- stage for lots of people because people were experimenting a little bit. Like dudes were wearing like at the beginning when 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 people were trying to get skinny jeans they weren't around they weren't in top. They were wearing the girl time. jeans. Yeah, women's jeans. Mm. Yeah, I think it opened up some 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 people's minds. Scratched a little bit yeah. of an itch. Nice. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, well, now you are no longer wearing skinny jeans mm-hmm. and no longer wearing leather jackets. The brand Story MFG, the whole manifesto. You guys really s- you, I think it comes across and it's just you know straight up admirable. But the brand really sticks to its values. Mm-hmm. What's the biggest bag you've had to turn down because it went against your moral compass? I don't know. Oh, um, we were supposed to. Do so- well, we were talking about doing something with Urban Outfitters. Like this is ages ago. Right. We wouldn't e- ever even entertain this 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 thing now. This the conversation, but it was kind of sold to us as like you could do th- like Zara, like like do this like collab where we could make clothes and then it'd be a bit more affordable. I was like, yeah, maybe that'll be good. Um, but we ended up not doing that because. One of someone very clever was like they're going to use you and destroy you, <laughs> and yeah. then they and then they were kind of re- extremely shitty afterwards. Uh, so I'm glad that, that we you can't really it. come back from an urban outfit. That's a no, tough look, dude. Uh, <laughs> no, that was a real close call and a real stupid move on our part to like even really to even entertain it. that. Yeah, is it because the bag was so fucking massive? No, the bag You're was like rubbish. We weren't going to get paid anything. What? So that's not really a good answer because. So the biggest bag was zero dollars. <laughs> well, we haven't really had that many opportunities. But there must have been a, collo- a collaborator Collabs, that, came, that yeah. wanted to like use your name and use your juice to like get some relevance and clout, and then full money. No, I mean you'd be really. I, I mean, you guys must experience it too. Like you, there's not that much money in this game. Eh, there's some money. <laughs> nowhere <laughs> to look. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, so a lot of times the two way street is like some bigger platform brand, or whatever. It's like I'll, we'll give you exposure. Mm-hmm. You give us a cool factor. This kind of like you know under the radar low key juice, and that's the exchange where it's like. Well, where's the money, motherfucker? Uh, yeah, I think Show me the money. Mm. I think because of our 
because we do stuff in a certain way, people might be a bit a little bit scared of working with us. Mm-hmm. They'll get called out for not being sustainable in their other uh, ways, right. or use natural dyes, or be vegan, or you're the token else. performative, sustainable yeah, collab when it's like we're also now so just murdering kind of like the filters world everywhere else. Out. That's good. Yeah, that's good. It's good. Yeah, I can't think of any time we were offered a big amount about a big amount of money. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Yeah. Do you have any? Do you have a brand you would love to collaborate with one day? Whether it's because it's like a, a, a category that you can't necessarily enter into yourself, or like you just like admire their work and think that you could do beautiful stu- stuff together. I know for a lot of people, they're like l- the answer to that is usually like brands they've grown up with, but, but or my like my Nike. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. My formative True. years that like we were in Iraq, we didn't have Nike. It was it was during the sanctions, so the only brand we had in Iraq was Kickers. Okay. And it wasn't real. Like, it was a fake store. And, <laughs> <laughs> and everything was fake in it. Uh, and so for ages, I was like, I'd really Instead like of Michael Jordan and Saddam Hussein. <laughs> <Yeah. just> <laughs> no, what's the big post of Saddam Hussein in there? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's crazy. Uh, so for ages, I thought it would be really cool to work with Kickers. But um, we're not, that, was, that, was, that wasn't me, like, um, that wasn't like me. It, this isn't, we're not working with Kickers. There's mm. nothing coming from Kickers. Mm. All right. Um, but the brands, I mean, I love ASICs. I think they do really cool mm. stuff. Shout out to ASICs. Shout out to the homies. Um, I think Crocs is doing cool stuff, and you must know Ryan at Crocs, no? Yeah, we know a yeah. bunch of people because we, we did the collab with Reebok and while mm-hmm. right. and when w- he was there, yeah. yeah. with Ryan. Well, Ryan, no, it was actually with Leo. Okay, Leo? Yeah. yeah, shout out um, Leo. Yeah, that was a lot of friends of the program. Such yeah. such a good team at, mm-hmm. at Reebok. Well, they, they fucking w- brought that shit back, dude, with yeah. all the fucking special projects and yeah. collabs. And they're all other places now. Leo's at, at Levi's mm-hmm. and Ryan's at Crocs, and they're just doing. They're continuing the like. Incredible work. Great do you minds. do denim? Does Story do denim? Yeah, we've made denim and we're okay. making it again. Um, but we don't do washes and natural stuff. Natural indigo? Yeah. yeah. Natural okay, indigo. So your ass won't smell? <laughs> yeah. Nice. Well, it has to smell itself, so it's kind of <laughs> <laughs> kind of starts off stinky. But yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, well, you do you do with the majority of your manufacturing in India, is that correct? Uh, at the moment, yeah. But okay. not, it hasn't always been that way. Right. But right now, mm-hmm. the majority, like, is any of this underrated as a country with, like, such a sartorial history and, and infrastructure itself that, like, it just doesn't get the recognition it deserves. I feel like it. I feel like maybe maybe I'm in a specific space right now, but I feel like it does get a lot now. But it certainly didn't before. Right, right. And it should um, because it's incredible. It's one. It's a place where like you can get anything done. Yep. It, like people talk about the American dream, but I feel like what it, um, India really feels like you can you can go and just do something. And yeah. You can get it done. you can sew some bootstraps and then pull yourself up by them. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, the dream of garments are alive in India. Yeah. There's. And in terms of natural dyes, it's like one of the last bastions of, of like a place where they're still really doing natural dyes. Other places too that we work in, like Thailand and, and Turkey. But um, but yeah, in, India is incredible. Is there any? Because um, it, it is true that like more brands, I think, are are very pridefully being like, yeah, we make our stuff in India, and like mm-hmm. take a look at like this process where we're, you know, it's the the artisans that have been doing this in the mm-hmm. family for generations. But there is like seemingly a subset or a small group of, of brands that are like proudly producing their clothing there. Is there any like, and you mentioned, you know, working in factories around other people's schedules. Is there like competition or are you guys all like sharing knowledge in factories and like contacts and networks like that? Uh, we, I, we've got a lot of people that we, sh- we share a lot of stuff. There, I'm sure there is competition, not s- not with us, but I know there's a lot. There's a lot of brands that look quite similar, especially at the moment coming out of India. I know there's a lot of competition. And are they like gatekeeping? Like, well, they're doing the same sort of stuff. Like the, the stuff they're all drawing on is the same craft, mm-hmm. so they end up looking quite similar. Um, but There's only so many processes, you know. Yeah, I mean, you can do block print shirt, and then like I don't know. Um, but for us, like our stuff is a little bit more weird, <laughs> I think, and a little bit s- like less. Although we make s- some stuff in India, there's not it, it's not super Indian looking. The same stuff, the stuff in Thailand is not very Thai looking. So um, yeah. The gate, the real, the like. There's a kind of natural gatekeeping that happens with um, craft. That it's such a slow process that if you get, if you work with a, a group of crafts people, they can't really work. For their it's hard for them to work with someone else because right. they're busy. Yeah, right. they're doing for sure. Stuff. Yeah. yeah, they yeah. can only take on so much. Yeah, I didn't know Thailand was like uh, at such a. I don't know, like manufacturing or yeah, like is that the next like frontier? Like if we're talking about India having this moment now, could we maybe see more brands like proudly coming out of Thailand? Do we I think? would love that. Yeah, I think so. Where I in th- where in Thailand? Uh, Sakon Nakhon, which is uh, the northeast. Is it up here? <laughs> <laughs> northeast up here. This yeah. is Chiang Mai somewhere. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, it's the northeast around there, like towards the borders. Oh, all right. Um, oh, this, this is where the heroin is. Mm. Uh, Golden Triangle, baby. Yeah, couldn't possibly say. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. A lot, the, of, lot of junk coming out of um, that region. It's a lot of traditional weaving there. Like I don't know, you know, you know about Harris Tweed, how that's made. No, no. Um, tell us. Okay, I won't. I should. It's then. my namesake. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> well. 
they, you know, they, they've got a certain way of doing stuff. Is obviously in, in the in the Hebrides, like for it to be Harris Tweed, it has to be woven in the person's home. Oh, right. true. Be, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Right. There's that same sort of vibe with these weavers in Thailand, where like these guys weave at home, or sometimes they have like a little cultural center they all weave at. They grow their own cotton. They grow their own indigo. They do small batches. It's a it's a social thing. It's a traditional thing. It's like it's for sometimes it's like farmers who do it for beer money sometimes they do <laughs> it full time um it's just like really 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 beautiful extremely extremely slow very hard to manage but um but yeah there's there's a lot of history also southern china northern vietnam like that whole area there's a lot of natural indigo and it's all the special thing about natural indigo or, or na about natural dyes is like different plants all over the place right different processes like how each community found out about dying. Like you have different di dying processes. It's just incredible. And you it's have like wine making almost. It's exactly like wine. So regional. Yeah. It's that, that our our brand. I always That's talk swag about war. It. Yeah. <laughs> I always say to people like it, it's much more like making wine or making beer than anything else. Like we have a you know we have a jacket and the 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 the, the way the jacket looks is down to like the same things that would affect wine. The ground, the mm. person's hands, the culture, the the, the weather. Yeah, the weather. It's all. It's all. It's all that. The, the, the climate knowledge. change. Yeah. yeah. Shout out the yeah. fucking boozers, man. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> is it gonna take? Is it gonna take like beer money makes the John's world go round? Is it gonna take fucking like cool guy brands being like like pl like planting their stamp proudly with made in Thailand for it to become like like is that what is that even what it happened with India with like you and eighteen East and uh, Karu and yeah three six fucking uh, Bodhi it feels different in India. I feel like people that. There's a lot more. There, the people are really prideful. Th th I mean, the reasons those th those cultures. I mean, I don't want to generalize, but in gen, but but, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but well played. But, but, but like in Iraq and in India, like people, the reason those car crafts are alive is because people do are really proud of them. Yeah, they're really proud that that and 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 yes, like brands like that recontextualize them for like a modern fashion that's thing. what i mean yeah but but they're, they're you know that's they they're they're in they're in modern life anyway in thailand those things that they really are dying they're not really not many people are working with them it, i don't really hear about brands doing like Fuck. thai fabrics and stuff because people don't value it it's not cool or new um is that just racism is that like it's just like not liking your own tradition I think. So oh, oh, you're talking about the people yeah. there. Oh, yeah, I see yeah. what you're saying. It's not like just the okay. traditions dying out. Wow. Yeah, yeah. We're young okay, folks shit. being like, I'm, I'm, I'm fucking going to Bangkok. I'm not chilling up here. Yeah, I mean, it's so. <laughs> I'm it's out. even just down yeah. to the color, like indigo. You know, you've got blue collar workers here, and then like at least like blue collar, blue collar stuff is like cool now. The blue collar stolen yeah. valor. Yeah. Right. Well. Yeah. But like the natural indigo stuff in Thailand, we've had lots of conversations with young people, and they're like, it's the stuff that my, you know, my granddad wears. Damn, right? yeah. all that Gucci. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Gucci <laughs> Louis. Um, but there's there's that story all over the place. That's kind of like a point of story is to like go to these places and find these little hidden gems and like work with them. It, I studied linguistics at, at uni, and I, I was so shocked at how many languages die. Mm. Every, yeah, every I can't remember the number, but they Latin, die all the time. famously. Yeah. Which one? Latin. Latin, right? <laughs> there was one language that was like was le the only person that was left speaking. It was a parrot or something. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> shout yeah, out yeah. to that guy. And yeah. I just <laughs> shout out that bird. <laughs> I was like so pathos, but like, how man, a bird. <laughs> how how many like crafts are like that? And Damn. and like I want to. I don't want to be too haughty about ourselves, but like that's an opportunity for story to like get something special. What's the furthest you've gone? Not like physically, but like what's like the most remote maybe you place you've been to to kind of like try and tap into a traditional uh, creative process. Uh, those places in Thailand are really remote. No one goes there unless you're working with these with these weavers. There's, yeah. there's not really nothing going on. Um, I mean, this is not a well visited region the uh, northeast of thailand yeah. i mean lots of people are from there but not many people no i mean like yeah. it for like tourists and shit yeah there's there's no tourists there's no. No just tourists sex tourism not uh, even. that's in the south yeah okay not even. got it good to know <laughs> yeah i mean you know just for friends um we're always looking like i'm looking <laughs> in iraq uh, looking oh, yeah. in lots of places but everywhere is really remote I yeah mean, yeah really really remote the least remote places we work sometimes we make stuff in, in portugal but otherwise everything's super remote right yeah intentionally i guess no, not to, 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 to be different and no, no, I don't. I don't care about being different. I'd, I'd love to find somewhere that was easy. <laughs> to be honest, uh, but everywhere, like all of our, well, it's kind of win-win, right? It's like you get to revive, you get to contribute to maybe the mm -hmm. revival or, or retention of this process, but then also like it is, it does kind of play into the great storytelling and narrative of, of yeah. story. Yeah, rare garments. Yeah. I mean, I don't want us to be seen as saviors because we're certainly not. Like every, we don't do the hard work. But everywhere is like a plane ride and a bus and a train and then a walk and yeah, it's and a tuk tuk and a yeah. fucking. What's yeah. uh, of all the like remote places that you visit for work? Like, what is the most beautiful, fun place to go that you look forward to every time? Oh, there's this place called Oroville where our main atelier is. It's this um, 
I was going to sound like a cult, but it, <laughs> it is kind of it's it was made in the sixties or seventies. I can't remember. It was f- like a town founded in the name of a of a leader, and um, <laughs> at the center of it is like giant golden orb <laughs> you go into to meditate. This is in Thailand. No, this is in India. In India? Okay, uh, and it's just like it's supposed to be this utopian town that was. Um, based on all these different principles, it's fifty percent international, fifty percent Indian, and you've got all these um, oh my old God, hippies dude. from all, but like generally. Sometimes from I know it's all crazy in there with the white people with the dreads. Uh, <laughs> this, this, I mean, it's crazy because you get like third generation people who are born in India that right. are fully white. Yeah, oh, yeah. So really? only, only speak Tamil. That's uh, so sick. That's mad funny. Um, people who like have been in cults before settled there like thirty years ago and started these little businesses and. Um, you know, like uh, one of uh, one of our natural diet partners is there. There's a place that makes kombucha, and they like research ancient technologies all the time. It's incredible. It's, it's yeah. really really fun. How you often gotta, you, you got to bring Kyrie Irving there? <laughs> yeah. Honestly, he would, have dude. A blast. he would never leave. Wait, how of, how often are you going? We used to, I used to go like we used to be there all the time. Most of our team are going in a couple of weeks. We go there all the time, all all the nice. time. And we're we're there in spirit almost every day. We've got a Slack channel with them, right? Just mm. chat on it. Nice. But that's like uh, the second home. Yeah, yeah, there and and Thailand. Well, story MFG is obviously like I don't know the, the story's great. Story, what is it? R MFG or RTS? What the fuck was it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, the the, na- the plain plain stuff. Yeah, RTS. Yeah, RTS. <laughs> and then you got uh uh I I don't know what we were debating. Like, is this a diffusion line? Like, gentle fullness, which I'm a fan of. I've anytime I wear the shirt, people are just like, yo, I fucking love that shirt. Yeah. What is it? I love you wearing the shirt. Thank Thanks. you. <laughs> is is gentle fullness a diffusion line of Story MFG? No, I, I don't know what you'd call it either. We call it a sister brand. I, I, okay. I'm really inspired by like Nepenthes. Mm-hmm. Like, I think they're really, really smart. Like, they'll have a brand and they have like a very specific direction for it to develop it. And then they don't really change the vibe with trends. They're like, this is what it is. Mm-hmm. And then like, we want to do something else. They do something else. Like, so, so they end up with like a stable of brands. Yeah. That kind of is Story MFG the Nepenthes of what? And then like, you're going to have yeah. your needles and your EG yeah. and your style too. That's, that, that's kind of the it's vibe. It's also like CDG model to some degree as well. Yeah. It? I think yeah. they do the same thing. Yeah. I think it's, I just think it's really clever because there's stuff that we want to do that doesn't really fit what story is right but we don't want to change story too much so we still want to see this stuff out in the world yeah and we want to experiment like i uh, to, to reference nick cave again he oh, yeah. someone he, he i got the no <laughs> pussy blues <laughs> <laughs> so that's grinder man right that's <laughs> another brand that's another band that he had and it has a really different sound the fusion band to <laughs> nick cave and uh, I saw an interview with him and they, he, they were like, how did you develop the sound? And he was like, well, we wanted to do something new and I would just sit at the piano and it would come out the same and someone told <laughs> him to just get off the piano. <laughs> <laughs> and get on another instrument yeah. and the whole thing was different. Yeah. Nick Stop. Cave, pretend that you don't get pussy. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, 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 <laughs> that's oh, crazy. No, damn, damn, right. Here we go. Yeah, he definitely okay, so it's not a diffusion line, but no. how has it affected the bottom line? Because we love it because the price point is like really fucking palpable. Oh, it's a little bit 80 less. 80 bucks for palpable. like a perfect fitting tea. Like, it's a little on. bit less. Yeah, yeah it's... um. It's not supposed to be cheaper, and and in, in some places it's more expensive. Really? There, yeah, yeah. There are some stuff that's more expensive. Huh. Just to, I guess you just don't see it in the cell as well. Wait, <laughs> are the t-shirts like eighty bucks? Am I ma- am I making that up? Oh, uh, something like that. Yeah. I okay. mean, so yeah. those t-shirts are recycled cotton. Yeah. But and they're they not feel organic. and they feel great. Yeah, but they're not organic. Uh-oh. Which is something we would never do for story. Uh-oh. Mm, interesting. Uh, and it's not because it's cheap. How much plastic is gentle fold <laughs> is putting <laughs> in my body? Well, that, another thing, yeah, we might do like if we wanted to do something with with um, recycled plastic stuff, like it would, it doesn't feel very story, but it does work for gentle fold. Okay. Mm. And it's not because it's not because it's cheaper or, or like th- that recycled fabric is actually as expensive. It's just that you know when you recycle fabric, you can't it can't be organic anymore. It's mixed, even if it's. It's right. mixed all together, so it's not all organic anymore. So I, I always thought that gentle fullness was like graphically driven. Is that not the mo- the running motif or no, theme of the it's brand? It's like the same. It's the same people with different tools. So okay. and, and 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 to give to give like the, the credit where it's due, the design stuff mostly comes from um, Dan, mm-hmm. who uh, I believe it's it's pronounced Dan. Dan. Damn, Daniel. Yeah, Dan, and then uh, a guy called Ethan who works with him. So we we. I kind of have to stay out of it, al- <laughs> although we all we all work together on it. But like, the input is more from them because whenever I suggest something, it always ends up looking like story. And <laughs> we'll end up you got to get off the piano, bro. Yeah, yeah exactly. for real, dude. Too many cooks in the kitchen. Type yeah, thing. so it's like, hey, l- we got all this, we got all these, we got all these, um, we got all this stuff that we want to do, and then and he, yeah, it's his kind of he's kind of leading the ship on that, and he's got great taste. Dan's name, da- sorry, when I don't mean to be offensive. Dan's name has come up a few times on the pod from guys that are like, yeah, like he's kind of like my secret weapon. Mm-hmm. He's the he's like the most tapped in guy that is like really sees what's happening now, what's happening next. Is he 
low key like one of the most talented guys working menswear right now. This is Daniel Certainly Pachitti. Pachitti. Yeah. Pachitti. He's definitely the most. He's definitely extremely talented, but he's also and also extremely influential. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he just says no all the time. I think that's the key thing. Oh, really? He just doesn't. He he must get approached a billion times a day. I can learn a thing or two from him. Damn. I think the the key thing is just that like he really knows what he's into, and he just doesn't do anything cringe. Right. Ever. He's and his partner too. Cringe proof. Yeah, and Sophia. Um, they they're both just like they're just and 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 the key thing is he's just a lovely dude. Yeah, uh, he's that's so what people so say. Nice. I mean, again, like James said, he gets name dropped all the time, and it's always with like in relation to like the, he might say no a lot, but like who he says yes to, it's like the just the illest murderer yeah. murders row of like yeah. only the best brands. And he's so supportive. I mean, he was like. 16 or 17 when we first oh wow oh, shit. Yeah. he was in a lookbook yeah, and yeah. then yeah and then, and then and then i didn't hear so child labor is okay <laughs> yeah, yeah sorry I mean, he was he, was, manifesto. In look, he, he joined the, he was in a lookbook and then i didn't hear from him again for like a while and then i just saw he was like really supporting us on yeah. instagram his post he posted about us when someone did a video and said this is the best brand in the uk and i was like Woo, so lovely. damn wow yeah. you um, thought he was just a fucking sexy face like a little toddler and then he, yeah and then he started doing <laughs> styling <laughs> are you the best brand in the uk yeah, uh, let's go. Th- th- you're, um, we are my favorite brand. <laughs> in the UK, that's for sure. Who else is killing it UK wise? I mean, you guys talk about them like Clint's and um, Cortez and all those people. Like they're obviously doing really, really, really well for the UK. They've got for, so, like bringing a much different uh, face of the UK to what crazy story energy story is. Yeah, um, there's loads of great brands in the UK. The UK is always so, I try. Like, I don't know why. Like I don't know how it's so creative. The UK has always been so influential <laughs> for music and art yeah. and stuff. I don't know why. I think because it's, it's not it's so fucking it's cold. I think it's the repression. Yeah. yeah. I think it's the sexualized repression. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's, ama- it's, it's, um, it's amazing. Yeah. It's the semen retention. It's the only way you could end up with Austin Powers, dude. Yeah. yeah. So it's, uh, I love gold. <laughs> there's a brand called Sage Nation who are really cool. Okay. Um, who else? Uh, we've got lots of friends who, 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 who are great. Like, what, like, what other br- like, what other brands do you wear? Uh, I don't wear anyone else. Really? Like, and that's not... It's not Except it's for Uniqlo and the underwear. Right, right. But yeah, I mean, yeah. in terms well, of like, yeah. like pieces. Uh, yeah, Fucking I don't, pieces. I don't, I don't wear anyone. One, because I, I can't... We have a tiny wardrobe. Two, I can't really afford to buy anyone else. <laughs> uh, and then three, like I... I, I, I or constant worry that if we buy something from someone else and then... And like you don't want to be influenced by something else, you know right? What I mean, like if you buy, if I buy something vintage, I'm like it's a really nice detail on the zip. That's cool. That's w- that's free sure. to use. But right to the archive to be Sage referenced. Or our friend Zenia or something, and I like something. It's like we can never do that now. Right. Right. Got it. Um, so, so you appreciate and support from afar. You can't cock block yourself. Yeah. <laughs> shoes. I buy shoes. I buy sh- buy footwear because you don't only because I don't make footwear yet. Asics. Yeah, Asics. So you mean? Oh, you're talking about you're, like you're, you're looking at my shoe rack outside, and you're like, yeah, this Asics row, I have the, uh, every <laughs> single one. Got it, got yeah, it, yeah, got yeah, it, yeah, got yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. What really non-sneakers like are you wearing? What, sorry? What non-sneakers do you wear? Uh, I wear those. Spo- oh, you mean like shoes? Shoes? I don't have any shoes. Because it's leather, really? right? Yeah, oh, yeah. True. Oh, it's just not. It's just a bit. It's a bit fancy for me. I don't have any any occasion to have to be to be really like, to look to look like a cute to look cute. You know? <laughs> to wear some <laughs> trickers or some bench <laughs> made yeah. fucking. When was the last time you like wore a suit? Um, at my wedding, probably, wow. or someone else's wedding. Uh, yeah, I just bought, I bought a suit on eBay, and I was, and that was it. it was right. Twelve pounds. It was, from <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was from the seventies. One and done. Yeah, Twelve but pounds. I bought it, and I was like, let me just see if I like the seventies fit, and, I, and then it was perfect. Nice. Sick, dude. Just, that, that was it. Damn, one like, for one. Yeah, it nice. Was great. It was great. All right. Well, speaking of weddings, it's time to get into the next topic of the podcast, which oh, yeah. is called. <gasps> Dad. Dad. Yes. <laughs> okay, you. And the missus, the bar- your bird, right? <laughs> uh, a fit, b- your fit bird, yeah, for life. Clearly, you've been wifed up. You're very much in love. Beautiful relationship. What was the first date you and the missus went on? Uh, I took her to a Star Trek convention. <laughs> oh my god, Wait, for real, <laughs> fucking yeah. bro! How did that work, dude? You fucking dweeb. And in hindsight, I, I wanted to. I went. Wait, to did she fuck with Star? Wait, no, Star no, 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 she doesn't. She doesn't watch it. Wait, she watches it now. Wait, did you say Star Trek or Star Wars? I'm Star sorry. Trek. Okay, so the, yeah. even the worst one. The, the nerdier the, the one. harder to get into one. Yeah. <laughs> Why did you choose? <laughs> Why did you do that? Yeah, break this down for us. I mean, it, it worked clearly. Like maybe you, you know, know what you're doing more than I. Do, um, like. I so I was I was actually I was I was living I was teaching English abroad uh, when I met her. I, I was I, I was teaching English abroad. I was between jobs. I came home to be, see my parents, and then I went to a party, and she was there, and we met. We were supposed to be like a summer fling. And mm. I, w- I had like two weeks and I wanted to go to the Star Trek convention. I was like, do you want to come? 
my mum's gonna be there too. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> the fuck? You hit him with the Vulcan mind meld, bro. It's been like it was, it's like completely tragic on paper, but I think that's what you're doing. <laughs> yeah. uh, well, when you said it, we laughed directly in your face, yeah. and this and is then, about how you met the love of your life. And then uh, <laughs> the yeah, Klingon with the rings on. Yeah, she took a picture of me with the Klingon. <laughs> oh my god! Um, she flicked you up with the Klingon on your first date. Yeah, there's a picture yeah. of me with the Klingon. Normally, that's like a third date thing. Yeah. Right? Ooh, yeah. Picture with the Borg. That's when you knew. There's no pictures of her there. She's always behind the. Yeah, camera. Yeah, by design, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Was she mortified or was she loving it? No, she's up for anything. She's lovely. Yeah, no, she, she, I think she loved it. Was she stoked to see you also just be like in your element on your nerd shit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you don't have to. Yeah, well, she's not pretentious, so it was, it was good. We just went there, and I'm sure we've done stuff that. I don't think we've ever done anything like that. When she was flicking up at the Klingon, were you like, oh, she's the one because she's willing to? My mum said that. Actually. Oh yeah, really? yeah. She was like, she's fantastic. When did you know that she was the one? Uh, pretty soon afterwards. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I feel like. Pretty. How, how long after the convention? Like, well, like a week, maybe. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I was supposed to go to another job in Korea and then I just canceled it and we stayed together. Wow. Wow. Story. And, uh, you know, what was that? Was that another uh, linguistics based yeah, job? Teaching, teaching English. Crazy. Yeah. Damn, that alternate timeline where you go to Korea? Yeah. I know. <laughs> Who knows yeah. what would happen? As a, as a linguist, what do you think about uh, John being added to the dictionary? Obviously, the more of the Philly John versus John's. Uh, but you see that? Well, you're, as a, it, I'm not a linguist, but if you're a linguist, you're supposed to be happy about it. There's like two types of... The more words, the better. Well, <laughs> we got like, they, they, they call it prescriptivism and descriptivism. And like mm. in, 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 in France, you've got, um, you've got uh, like a, a board that, that allows words to be in or out of the dictionary. And you, you have to... You have to pass that board for it to be accepted into the language. And in English, we don't have that. And that's why English moves so fast mm. versus something else. That's so like French with like, oh, champagne has to come from this one fucking region. Yeah. yeah. Which, yeah. I mean. So I don't think John's ever going to be in French. Okay. Right. Yeah. Le Jean. But John's are booze. John's are wine. Mm -hmm. We established mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, mm -hmm. you know, who knows? Um, now that there's a kid in the picture, now that story is going crazy, I'm sure that you guys do have to carve out time to like you know get the romance going again what's date night like what do you guys like to do for date night now you know get a babysitter get a sitter maybe get fucking dan to watch the kids <laughs> for a night I or wish. billy dan lives in new york unfortunately oh really yeah yo well, can you billy maybe billy can watch the kid uh he lives in london and we live in brighton okay. but maybe we'll rope in a, p a member of staff at some point well what, what do you like to do on date night um we haven't had one we haven't had one for a while damn like a kid, like for two like years <laughs> like a nuclear bomb goes off and you have to like rebuild your life <laughs> You um, Oppenheimered your whole shit, yeah, bro. What, you wait, you, you built. Been, you. <laughs> I have become death destroyer of my <laughs> fucking <laughs> social life, <Yeah>. dude. <laughs> uh, well, we. The thing we do most is that you know he goes to bed and we just sit on the couch and watch like a TV show like Naked and Afraid. Oh, and nice. Something really trashy. Yeah. Katie's watching this thing now. I don't know what it's called, but it's like <laughs> Love Island meets Bridgerton. Do you, you, heard, you know about this? Wait. So it's it like everyone's uh, reenacting or like, like they're wearing. Regency. And like the the people's like the the dating person's family's around, and they're trying to find oh a suitor. <laughs> so silly. That sounds awesome. It's awful. <laughs> like I'm, just I'm actually just waiting for her to go to bed so I can watch Star Trek. Or Star Wars <laughs> is that what you? That's what you're yeah. throwing on? Hey, I'm watching Gold Rush at the moment. What's that? What's that? It's like a, it's like the Kardashians, but for people to dig gold out of the soil. <laughs> <laughs> it's really. Is every, it every Americans? Yeah, it's Americans. Mm. In like the Yukon, every episode's the same. Every episode like. They try and get the gold out. The machine breaks. Disaster. Right. This they is a reality TV program. Yeah, it's do like you watch seven hundred seasons of it. <laughs> <laughs> it's do you like watch ice road truckers? Or yeah, 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 yeah. Do you watch Alone? Yeah. Is that? I guess they have like gorpy, like synthetic gorpy stuff, and then they end up wearing like animal furs. And Are shit. you thinking think I'm getting like inspiration from gold? No. I mean, <laughs> they kind of all look sick when they make like f mittens out of like rabbit. They hides. do look actually. They're, they're, there's like a version of Gold Rush, which is like Water Gold Rush, where they like, <laughs> dig, dig uh, and 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 they, water wear, they rush. wear. I love gold. They wear caps. <laughs> And on top of the caps, they wear a beanie. Okay. It looks sick. Yeah. It looks great. Put it in the next. It's like a styling yeah. move for the next yeah, lookbook. Maybe next yeah. time. We're going to yeah. see Dan rocking it on the IG. Yeah. Yeah. We're, gonna, we're actually going to know where the source Dan, is this Dan's time. Dan's got his own style. <laughs> I don't think he would do that. <laughs> Let me ask you this. Will guys who wear Story MFG only be able to get hippie chick pussy? <laughs> um, no, I'm not sure. Okay. You're not sure. No. No, I think, I think you don't have uh, you don't have young shooters out in the field. No, I think you can I think I think <laughs> the, the nice thing about the, the thing I like about stories people style it in all different ways. Right. And I think that you can I've seen people wear it with like blow Corey stuff and I've seen people wear oh, it really? like very like uh, like oh, what's the one that Katie hates? <laughs> um um Goblin core. <laughs> 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 the versatility of the brand, I think, is one of its yeah, strongest. Yeah, for sure. That, like we haven't really talked about, but I think is like absolutely whatever your personal style is. There's something you can find in story to 
to mix into your own shit. Wearing the clothes versus the clothes wearing you, yeah, like we talked about thing, before. Like, that's the thing I love. That's, that's very important. And I mean, like sometimes we do make stuff that's a bit Larry, but you don't have to buy that. And that's something <laughs> a bit I Larry. Yeah, <laughs> Larry, like a bit. <laughs> uh, you know, that's like a fucking <laughs> piece of shit. <laughs> that's something we learned from um, Japan. Like yeah, we'd make a piece. We'd make something for like Japan's gonna love this, and they don't like it. <laughs> and then those fickle, yeah, goldfish and then, mongers. And then they'll like like something that was just super plain, and then they get it, and they get it in store, and you see how they start in a store, and the styling is the thing. They right. like freak like the yeah, fuck it just out of looks it. Looks good. It's all plain, but the styling's great. Mm. And like Yoji Yamamoto. Yeah, yeah, literally in a nutshell. Master. That's that's the what master. Like, now we're like less fixated on the piece and more on like you know what interesting like the, like the cohesiveness yeah. of like yeah. what could be done with it yeah like yeah yeah i mean this uh, this plain dyed stuff like i would never have thought it would be you know people would care about it but like mm. it's a bit more versatile actually this yeah. is literally yeah. th- you're teaching it's like teaching man to fish dude yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. yeah love that um how much money do you make um well you know we made like nothing for six years and then that's crazy nothing. not not very much not were you in much. crazy debt to, to get the brand going does debt exist in the UK? No, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it definitely exists, and we weren't in debt, and we we, we, we just made it work. Like I, like I said about us, we're just a bit, a bit risk-averse, so we never did anything that we needed money to do. So we <laughs> never went to Paris to show our whole right, collection. Right. We couldn't afford it yet, and, and against advice to get a loan and just do it, and then maybe you'll hit it. We just didn't do it until we could afford it. Um, so we never were in debt. In fact, the company was like massively in debt to us. So <laughs> oh, that happened once with us. Yeah, yeah. we had a situation. Like yeah, yeah. So we don't need to get into it. Yeah, so we're, on, we're on okay money. Did now, you pay yourself back? Uh, yeah, last year. Oh, oh nice. Well, congratulations, yeah. dude. Yeah. That's gotta thing. feel good. Yeah, so feels story feels MFGs, <laughs> story <laughs> MFGs in the black. Um, I think that we will blackish. Be, I think we had to take out a loan Gray. to okay. cover uh, to cover something, but we will be like what, two weeks from now. Nice. Wow, yeah. Yeah. that's crazy, dude! It only took ten years. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and no, uh, no, ind- we're still independent, right. still family run. Would you ever take like large investment, or do you want to remain independent for independence sake and all the benefits that come with it? I thought about it a lot. Um, were you not approached? Like, not like anyone has asked. No. Oh no. I think okay. you need really? to like. I think you need to act like. I think you need to. You need to be Jacques Mou, dude. <laughs> I think you, no, I think you need to be looking to be. Oh, you know, it's like you, need, you want to be courted. Yeah, you, know, you need to. You need to kind of tell. Got to put yourself out there. out there a little bit. Yeah, but um, I don't think we would take investment because everyone I've seen who's taking the investment has kind of like lost, fucked. lost their energy for the brand. Yep. But I would. S- I would and then you lose your brand after you lose your energy. Yeah, mm. I think I think if we were going if we ha- if we were going to do anything, although we won't, it would be just to sell it outright. Oh, um, nice. Ooh, what's do you have a number? No. We, we, wouldn't do it. we wouldn't do it. Well, I have a number. I said it's Katie. The other day. A like, billion pounds. <laughs> she was like, "We can't survive on that." <laughs> a billion pounds. A billion. So I oh. said, "Oh, we don't know, two like couple million. She was like, "That one gets anywhere." Yeah, <laughs> that's and, just and the, that's just the kid, dude, for the yeah. next fucking yeah. you know sixteen years. Yeah. Well, okay. Besides putting your money back into your own brand and and like I know mm. you know obviously like reinvesting it. What do you like to spend your hard earned money on outside of just like the business and and raising your family and Star um, Trek convention tickets? Yeah. yeah. Right. Um. Well, like I said, it was always it, it always have little different fixations. At the moment, I'm really into like cookware. Mm. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, that's part of the part of the reason I wanted to come to New York. I was like, I'm going to go and check out what cookware they got. <laughs> 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 like <laughs> like, like Chinatown, like the restaurant depots. Yeah, yeah. All I right. mean, I get really obsessive about stuff. It's why I got obsessed about yeah. watches. Watches. Why story exists. Like Star Trek movie. figurines. Yeah. Not figurines, but okay. like yeah. Um, <laughs> so at the moment, it's like cooking stuff. At the moment, uh, pretty pretty boring answer. Are What's you? Your, yeah. I was are, you just, are you just going in crazy in the kitchen yeah. right now? Like no, just I just like <laughs> Wait. someone. So, so this is what happens with me. Like someone can say something in passing. Like hey, there's a little bit of interest in this thing, and I just go. The other day, one of our staff members was telling me about different types of tomatoes. I was like, I thought it was like a few types. She's like, no, there's loads. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god! It started like a month of like tomato research, research. On tomatoes. <laughs> oh my god! And then like I must yeah. have spent. Like oh, but by the way, they're, so the first order is it's pronounced tomato. <laughs> so that's the first thing. So yeah. you're saying how many wrong? tomatoes have you eaten in the past month? <laughs> Right, so a month big ago, nightshade so guy over a month, here. A month ago, it was just normal tomatoes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. As of today, <laughs> there's a there's a like a weed setup in a cupboard at home now. I've, I've oh bought, shit! I bought like your grow lights, a grow room, and I'm growing like speciality mm. uh, rare tomatoes in it. So like that's that's kind of like heirloom arc. type shit. Uh, yeah. So like, you're, like a, you're like a hop, you're like a cereal hobbyist. Yes. Wow. Yeah, yeah. It's How it's are you eating these? Are you like making BLTs out well, the ass? In three or four months, I'll tell you. Okay. Yeah. I guess you can't have <laughs> bacon. So, <laughs> damn, you've never had a BL. Or you haven't had a BLT in how long? I've never had one. Ever? Well, I, I grew up. I grew up in a Muslim oh, household. Oh, that's right, dude. So there's no. Um, well, tomato sandwich. No pork on your fork. Yes. Yeah, I've just had, tomato on its own. I mean, I've had tomato, turkey, bacon. Mm. I've had vegan bacon. Turkey bacon's good. Yeah. 
Yeah, it was good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, it's only going to cost you four hundred dollars and six months to grow four tomatoes, yeah. which yeah. you can yeah. just get at fucking Tesco yeah. for six sixty pence. Yeah, nothing. Yeah, and yeah, you yeah. can always throw them at but, someone. But, but, but what, <laughs> amount of, what enjoyment I've had? Okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I guess that's true. Other than that, we spend money the real on tomatoes are the <laughs> friends we made along the exactly. way. Damn, you're just like a tortured soul, dude. In nice. terms of like, you're like, uh, <laughs> what's the most expensive hobby you picked up that went absolutely nowhere? <laughs> yeah. Uh, w- watches, but okay. I've sold all of them. So I, but, I, yeah, I but that's an investment. Money. But the tomatoes aren't like an investment. I mean, it's an investment if you buy the same stuff. If you buy the right stuff, but you can buy a lot. Of, like I don't know, people have got like hundreds of like G shocks. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, right. like, well, like yeah, like on, go on Reddit and like <laughs> read Tiso or something. Are you big on? T- are you big on tomato Reddit? <laughs> there isn't one, I don't think. Oh, oh of <laughs> course <laughs> there is, dude. There's Reddit for everything. I should look, but I don't think there is. I'm, I'm big on tomato one. TikTok. Okay. Oh, yeah. oh tomato yeah, talk. Sure. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> We've been there. Um, that's insane. <laughs> <laughs> What's the average net worth of the story MFG consumer? Who we talk about here? Who's buying your shit? I don't know, you know, we've got such a strange, we've got such a, we've got a lot of like people like 60 plus that, that mm? yeah. start from us, like a lot and a lot of young people. Um, I have no idea. And, and it's a question I ask myself because I, I couldn't afford to buy as much story as customers buy. Mm. Um, not sure, but we do have, a, we do have like a range of stuff. We've got cheaper stuff like t-shirts yeah. and hats and bags like this, th- this um, bag I'm wearing today is like probably one of our best sellers. Not sure, but I know that people like who, who like story and get into the brand, they get really evangelical about it. Do people start with like an entry level piece like this cheaper bag? You think, or and like, then like l- and like level up, or uh, some? I think the the railroad is generally like someone will buy something from another store, mm. and then sometimes they'll message and be like, "This is I, this is weird, like this smells weird, or it's done <laughs> something." And then the customer service, uh, we reply like explaining all about the brand, and then they get really into it. Mm. Then uh, they read the manifesto. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's like levels to it, and that's that's by design because that's how I like stuff. Like, right. if I'm gonna buy, if I'm like, oh, I need to buy a backpack, it's like that's nine months of work yeah. to like look at everything, read everything, buy it, and, like, and I feel like other people are yeah. like for that. nerds by nerds. Yeah, yeah. We yeah. were laughing at the fact that literally on the site, you're about like we're a normal like about me section mm-hmm. for Brandon. It's a manifesto, like mm-hmm. you're like a, a lone wolf fucking <laughs> match shooter, Brandon. <laughs> Even though it's all very positive stuff. Yeah, yeah. but the word best. manifesto is funny. I know, yeah, it's kind of a sinister <laughs> name. I do know, but yeah. I'm <laughs> yeah. Putting the fest in manifesto <laughs> is is the Star Trek like universe building is that influencing the story MFG universe universe building at all? Maybe I don't know. Every brand feels like it. Feels every, like there's some every correlations. Every designer is like has this egotistical thing about wanting to build. Gentle fullness is the thing. next generation. Ooh. Yeah, I mean, yeah, Star Trek or like even the Mar- Marvel or something. You know, they got this like multiverses. Like a, we do see story as like what would. What would uh, what would a MacBook look like if it was made in a world where like everything's designed by story? What if uh, 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 an adult made it and not a child? Yeah, you know, right. What would that look like? Yeah. What would a MacBook look like if story <laughs> made it? Because it'd be made out of cotton <laughs> and like organic materials. Work? Like, well, metals, be great for typing metals, on manifestos. Metals, or metals and organic material. Lab but grown, like, lab grown like, diamonds. Yeah. For be, the be, like, it would be a little bit wonky and a little bit weird and like. It might look, yeah, that's a bit lumpy. Yeah, a bit lumpy. Like we're <laughs> working on perfume now. Oh, like, oh yeah. it does how does stinky is that fragrance going to be, fantastic. dude? Oh yeah, is yeah. it very musky or? Uh, it's it's the best thing I've ever smelled. It's wow. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. What are the the best thing you've ever smelled? It's, it's what are the incredible. top notes? It's ba- uh, one what of do we hit with up front? Um, this thing called Miti Attar, which is um, there's this place in 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 India that that extracts scents from roses and stuff like all these things that you generally know about. They distill it. But this um, this family run place discovered that they can ex- use the same extraction on clay teapots and teacups. Uh, in India, they drink out of these like clay cups, yeah. disposable. They drink chai out of them, so which is like a mixture of tea and spices, and then they are disposable. So they they distill the clay that's fired, and the smell of it is the smell of like earth. Mm-hmm. It's crazy. So <laughs> it's that like sexy dirt. Yeah. It's like it, people describe it as like the smell of, of like rainfall. Ooh, it's very ooh, like that. that. Damn, so very scents. cerebral. Yeah. yeah, I mean that's that's the story way. Like we could make it smell that just smells nice, which is really all everyone wants. But <laughs> we've got to find like a deeper story to it. Right. So it's that, and then like fifty other ingredients that mix together that all work. So when's that dropping? Yeah. When's November? when's the rainfall dropping? November. Oh. Wow, dude. Yeah. Are you excited for that? Yeah. Felt the rains <laughs> down in Brighton. <laughs> 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 we've worked really. I mean, I, we got to send us some of that. Yeah, we'll please. The it's best thing you've yeah. ever smelled. That is an insane statement, but I believe it, dude. What, what about your child's hair after a bath? 
the placenta. The best perfume I've ever seen. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Because um, you're doing a good job selling it either way, bro. I mean, yeah. but that kid I'm makes, hyped. That kid does make some bad smells. Oh, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Some fa- Is he vegan? Uh, not strictly, no. Are vegan farts worse than normal farts? Uh, I guess it depends what you eat, but no, I don't think so. I think I mean he he's not vegan because he had to have formula in it, for example. Oh right, and duh. Like, mm. Mm. Did he had to grow? I just meant your farts. Milk farts. Oh, hell. Yeah. 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 what's um what's, what's the episode <laughs> title? <laughs> <laughs> what's the ultimate guilty pleasure that you miss eating from before you were vegan? Like the thing that you're like, fuck, dude. Nothing specifically. Really? Just the ease. Like everything. Oh, now, like, obviously. It's gonna be hard when you travel now. Ye- to some, to not to India, but to like yeah. parts of, of Thailand, easy. or even Thailand, right? Yeah. Thailand's kind of easy. New York's okay. Paris used to be terrible, but it's also like you have to go to a place to get it. Like I can't just, you know, get a hot dog off the street here in general. So well, yeah, you don't want a dirty water glizzy. Yeah. I mean, like no, you do, dude. You would <laughs> fucking, bl- you might die. It's so yeah. good, dude. Um, <laughs> but there's nothing fish. I mean, um, there's some things that like technology hasn't come far enough to give us a good. Oh, like sushi. Like you don't eat sushi. We eat sushi, but like it'd oh. be vegan sushi. Right. Oh. Um, what's the, what's the deal there? Cucumber. Yeah. Oh, just tr- an AAC roll, dude. Eggplant. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Right. There's loads. There, there but no toro for the boy. Yeah. There's a lot of good. For religious reasons, vegan stuff in Japan and yeah. in Thailand. But other how much do you love meeting a pescatarian and then getting the chance to one up the fuck out of them? <laughs> I don't. I, I don't. You I don't, don't judge. I don't. I don't know. Okay, so I you're like the you you and Katie are the two vegans that are not absolute pricks about I it. I think because we've been we're like level ten <laughs> vegans by now. Like yeah. we, we're over the right. the, that you get past. You've it. ascended. Third eye open. Because you can like it's like sustainability, <laughs> veganism, anything that's sure. like kind of anything that's kind of like good or like trying to be good like you can never be pure enough right ever so, so honestly the most sustainable thing you can do is kill yourself so honestly you truly kill yourself save the planet even dude. if yeah. you did you know, people could, could, could criticize how you did it oh, oh. <laughs> true dude you gotta fuck dude what are you gonna do with your body hey. and there's never a right answer <laughs> <laughs> eat it yeah have um, someone eat it dude. grow some mushrooms in it yeah. yeah what is last money question what is a large purchase you made recently that you ended up regretting maybe uh, as a hobbyist you have more than one answer <laughs> Yeah. Wow. Um, housing market's going through a bit of crisis. Oh, yeah? So we bought a house recently, and now we need to move it on, and we cannot. So oh, fuck, dude. Boring answer, but that's probably... That's oh, probably well, it. that is the correct That is <laughs> Yeah, really, okay. Yeah, that is the correct that's, answer. Uh, that's the one. <laughs> Damn, all right. Yeah, are things good over there? Like, what the fuck's happening? Because it felt like you guys were about to implode for a little bit because bread <laughs> prices were too high, and like, yeah, what's happening? Yeah, yeah, I think we're through that. I don't right. know. Like, everything just got really expensive. People complained about it. <laughs> They've stayed expensive, and then it's people... Like, right, people well. just moved on. Yeah, and then yeah. the queen died. Yeah. yeah. That's attractive. And they yeah. <laughs> they got to focus on And then foot, he saw it. Yeah. Yeah, and and the Premier League was back, dude. Yeah. Yeah. I will say, we want to thank you for coming on to the only podcast that matters. Mm-hmm. Before we get you out of here yeah. into the afters, we know you're only here for a short amount of time. and uh, Not a long time. Great sport for you know putting up with the jet lag and everything. We would love to offer up some constructive criticism. Okay, nice. Take it or leave it. Highly suggest you take it. Just yeah. you know, two fucking menswear experts <laughs> talking to another menswear expert. Maybe we can offer some perspective, whether it's like you know the American side of, of us, the yeah. non-vegan perspective but um i'll go first uh you know th- let's admit it feel the temperatures outside mm-hmm. fucking record like a hurricane's about to hit yeah like record-breaking hurricanes already the world's already gone to shit mm-hmm. it's it's a wrap mm-hmm. done just sell out and collab with Sheehan. yeah bro let's go full dude. circle from when you yeah. turn down urban outfitters mm-hmm. collaborate with somebody even more evil and yeah. even worse for the planet just excellent. become part of the problem dude excellent idea yeah, yeah. get off your high horse I'll look into it. Honestly, yeah. when motherfuckers zig, you should zag. Yeah. Collab with Sheehan. Um, <laughs> what did it look like? Uh, <laughs> Shit. Yeah. I don't they, know. Definitely Larry. Don't, they, they definitely don't <laughs> use real leather, I'll tell you that. Yeah, that's true. I know so little about them. Or the, the first time I heard about them was the, the recent controversy on TikTok where yeah. people went there. And we that was so funny, dude. Oh, yeah. I wish, I wish we had talked about them more. That was incredible, dude. Influencers know. will literally do anything for a free trip, dude. Yeah, I haven't. Uh, yeah, I haven't. <laughs> and I'm speaking for myself too. How dude. much I would have been there if I was invited? How, can I ask how old you are? Thirty six or thirty seven. I can't. Oh, remember. Okay. I, was born, I was born in eighty six. <laughs> so we're the same age. Wait, ni- 86. Yeah. 96? <laughs> 86. 86. Yeah. Okay. We're all the same uh, age. Okay, right. we're all the same age. We're all the same age. How much time do you spend on TikTok? Oh, loads. But yeah. But my TikTok is, is mad. It's all tomatoes and <laughs> and, and she and, 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 and like, it's, it's like very like it's yeah. so specific. Yeah. Yeah. 
All right. Yeah. Just curious. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. Also, same. Yeah. Um, well, before you fucking collab with Sheehan and start turbocharging the end of the world, even though that's going to happen mm-hmm. again without you. Um, and obviously, my, my my thing is before you leave town, just yeah, eat a hot dog. It's so worth it. Okay. But I think is, can you take us the next time you go to India? We make our cut and sew in India. We have not had the pleasure of going. I would love to go with a fucking mm. expert. I'd love to have Just you. have us tag along, bro. Yeah, yeah. I want to go and meditate in the golden orb. I would actually prefer to go to Thailand with you. Yeah, I'd also it. go to Thailand. Yeah, dust, dust off my tie. But it's quite... They're close. We can go to both. Right. We, we usually do both. He was almost a porn star in Thailand. Yeah. Oh, it's amazing. Um, the place in India is in- genuinely incredible. Like, it's so Dude, unusual. I want to go so bad. Where and in India is it? Like, what... Like what? It's near Pondicherry, which mm-hmm. is a part of India, which was not colonized by the British, it's it's like colonized like by the French. Oh. <laughs> oh. So it's like they drink wine. There's like it smells French worse French buildings. <laughs> Where like north, south, west, south, uh, south. I'm rubbish at this. Southeast. Okay. Yeah, southeast. All our menswear s- friends that go there for work, Antonio, mm-hmm. yourself, Andrew, everyone's like, you guys gotta fucking go there. Yeah, yeah. Oroville. Have you ever been? You've been to India. Yeah. Yeah. See, I've never had the pleasure. I would. I would love to go. I got very. I got very sick and got hit by a motorcycle my second (laughs) year. Yeah. You need a redemption tour, dude. No, well, I, I was also in Bangalore, yeah, or it's now so called Bengaluru. Yeah, yeah, yeah. India's not like a tourist friendly city. <laughs> yeah, India's like lots of different countries. Yeah, some guy tried yeah. to kill you with his motorcycle, I think, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You. The Dye or maybe I hallucinated that, to be honest. Yeah, the Dye House is really beautiful. Like, it's you, you, you all the content that you guys put post from there, and like, yeah, uh, yeah. again, like it's sick. And again, it's like winemaking, it's just yeah. wild right. that we make clothes out like that way. John's is wine, baby. Yeah, also, just said, can you tell Dan to do the show? We need to get Dan on the show. Yeah, I'll ask him. Cool. Yeah. Make, make yeah, a little, Leo make a little okay. No, no, we know Leo. Leo's oh, okay. never really in New York. Yeah, and I think oh, okay. he prefers. Well, he to like was a, just here for his birthday. Happy he belated, Leo. To like a, a kind of like a low key guy. Is it? Think. Okay. Yeah. You know, yeah. like a dot, like a, a dot connector. Also, guy. I'm not trying to deal with Levi's beyond, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather go to the house and get free jeans and keep it a fucking the keep house. it pushing, bro. Um, Saeed, thank you so much, thank bro. You what would you like to plug? Yeah. Where can the kids follow you? Go off, dude. Uh, we're still in on Instagram. Store, my Instagram is aside underscore story FG and Casey's is Casey story underscore. Story There's also FG. a few other like diffusion. Yeah, we've got <laughs> diffusion grams. <laughs> there we go. Okay, we've got gen- at gentlefulness, which is the sister brand. We've also got a but like a behind the scenes type Instagram called at MFG underscore MFG underscore MFG. I can't remember how many, but you'll start, <laughs> you start typing it, you'll find it. Is that, was that influenced by Den? Yeah. No. no. It was, I don't remember. Like, what all right, let's just repeat by. the same shit over and over and over. It was just like I just wanted to find, have a space where we like. Our Instagram has to be so polished now. I wanted to somewhere that could be a bit rougher. And How's really your tick? Do you have a TikTok? We do have one, but I'm not. On, I don't know. I w- I'm on TikTok all the time, but I, it just. I don't know. I don't think we've found our voice there. Right. Like, as brands say, I feel like we <laughs> don't really make. Don't really feel like it's for us, actually. Well, I do think that some of the behind the scenes stuff might actually resonate on TikTok. Yeah, and it's good like once, and then it gets boring, <laughs> and then you just post yeah. behind the scenes all the time. Yeah, that's 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 the crux, and you've got to make like so much content you could start a podcast and just post your yeah. clips there yeah yeah we could we'd have started one but <laughs> i actually have the same all wait, the same wait for real yeah but um, Co- invite us on your show dude yeah i will do let's record live in india yeah oh it's like a, like you and your wife have like have it's a me and yeah me and my wife and i've also interviewed i've got lots of content already i've interviewed all really dyers and stuff but i just haven't got time oh, nice. to edit it together i have the same stuff as you and i've just like the gain was all wrong so it's like really quiet <laughs> really, yeah really le- hey man oh, well. we're still figuring it out <laughs> yeah you know yeah. three years in and we don't yeah. know what the fuck we're doing also shout out billy buy some horatio loafers if you're listening at home and all these mm. motherfuckers oh i want to i need loafers and you like, buy some fucking horatio <laughs> loafers. <laughs> God damn. billy is here he's got his own brand called horatio <laughs> actually i mean if i can plug like uh, uh, still Story's got lots of all, most people working on has got side hustles. Billy's got Horatio. Uh, one of our designers got a bad brand called Arx. Doing it's doing really really well. Um, and like the Ox cord? Uh, no, A R C S. Okay. We make these really great bags. Um, anyone else? There's lots of different side hustles, but not all of them are brands. Yeah. Uh, you can uh, Saeed's in the cord. You can just fucking yeah. add yeah. him, and you can fucking <laughs> chat his ear off yeah. about customer service or all the yeah. other fucking exactly. cool brands that the people that work for him do on the side. Saeed, thank you. Appreciate you, bro. The only Thank podcast you very much for Chef, me. take us out. <laughs>